Welcome, 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 welcome to Atari Age Day on Zero Page Homebrew. Today, oh my god, we have a lot of things to do. <laughs> it's uh, going to be very exciting. We're going to be talking to just a ton of developers. Uh, we're going to be unboxing all of the new Atari Age releases for 2600, 5200, 7800, 8-bit, and Jaguar. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking live with the developers That's from awesome. all those games. That's so exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully everything's working. Yes. We had to completely redo the setup. This is obviously not the, not not the not studio. The studio. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> uh, we're in front of a relaxing fireplace. Yes. That is uh, not on right now. No, no. That would that'd be, be too hot. <laughs> And uh, the cats got, have joined us right at the last minute. mugs with yes. our tea in it. Yes, we've got our um, tea to stay caffeinated. That's important for a five to six hour show. <laughs> oh, you're underestimating it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've clocked it in at 6.5 hours. If uh, everything goes on schedule, might be a little bit less. That's we'll crazy. We'll see. That's crazy. That's a lot Are of Are you stuff. on the main floor today? We're in the, well, one yeah. of them's below and yeah. one of them's above. Yeah. So We're in our living floor, room. We're, we're in, in our living, living room. room. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got the cats yes. nearby. One's on the couch over there, and one is one just and jumped on my here. Ju just ran ran up just as the show started. He oh. he had this this sixth sense that um, the camera's turned on. So yeah. <laughs> he knew. He knew. Yeah, He's we're out on the in balcony. his we're in his territory now. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. This uh, is their living room. So I've got uh, three systems hooked up. I don't have a jack don't have a Jaguar, unfortunately. But I've got the uh, XEGS hooked up. I've got the 7800, which will be performing double duty today. Yes. For 2600 games and 7800 games. And I have the 5200, which I dusted off because I almost never use the 5200. <laughs> um, but I've got that hooked up with a Genesis controller and a special adapter so that I can use a Genesis controller because all six of my 5200 controllers don't work. <laughs> Big surprise there. Wow. Um, so thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Um, tons of people in the chat. Uh, Atari Age is there. Uh, that's Al, and we'll be speaking with Al very shortly to kick it all off. Excellent. Uh, Neo Media 1974. <laughs> Lol at the 5200 controllers can sympathize. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Neo Media, Dan AVC. Actually, I'll use this. This will be much easier, I think. Metal Lunar 7, Bratwurst Sausage, Pac-Man Plus. Hey, Bob. Thrust 26, second longest show. Yes, it will be. <laughs> the longest show we ever did was a 12-hour marathon, marathon yes. uh, raising money for uh, Stella, uh, the video game emulator for the 2600. Azure 6502, Carl G, Mike Soul, Captain Classic. Uh, do, 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 eh. EDF 2025, Ground Trooper, Neo Games Atari, uh, oh, and so much more. This doesn't scroll back very far. Uh, Marco Johannes, uh, Vitoko 8 bits. Uh, let's just quickly go through which games that we're going to be unboxing today. We have, we have the actual boxes, cartridges in them, manuals. manuals. It's going to be a lot extras. of fun. And Tanya's exciting. going to be playing them. Yes. While I'll be talking to the yes. people. She does like playing. Don't worry <laughs> if she doesn't say anything while she's playing. I get quiet. Yeah, she, yeah. she enjoys playing. Them. I do. Right? Yes. <laughs> Good. I like this. is my favorite part. It's like... Uh, so we're going to be uh, unboxing Tower of Rubble, Robot City, Venture Reloaded, Deep Stone Catacomb, uh, Pit Cat, Avalanche, Zookeeper, Scramble XE, Adventure 2 XE, Panic Rooms, Dragon Cash, Daredevil, Cannon Head Clash. Oh, that's very close to Cash. Cash and Clash. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Galactopus, uh, The End, Magical Fairy Force, uh, four Jaguar games, uh, Ninja Sky in Low Res World. Oh, kitten. <laughs> and we have a uh, camera there for uh, showing off the... Uh, 
the boxes. Or or the cats. Or the cat. Yeah. Right now he's taken up uh, <laughs> taking up that spot. But that's the new okay. cat can. We'll yeah. move him when it's time. Yeah. Don't lick the, the camera, please. <laughs> no. We'll have to clean that. Yeah. Well, let me show you the big box of <laughs> goodies that we have here. Now, uh, tell me what you had to do. What did I have to do? Well, yeah. I haven't seen what's in this box. I have way. because everything came flat packed. All the boxes, the manuals, and the games. So I uh, spent, what, Thursday night um, just uh, assembling everything. So uh, I think I did a good job. I didn't yep. I didn't bend didn't or break anything. any boxes in the process or... or no big I, tears well, or I creases? Well, I tore up every manual bef before I put just it in, in half, there. Just right? in half. Just in half. I tore the pages out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so all the boxes are together with all the exciting stuff. Yep. I mean, you could put it in front of you if that's easier. That might be easiest, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I haven't seen any of the games or any of the boxes because we kept yes. it a secret. Uh, so. It's very exciting. <laughs> what else is there? Oh, yes. Uh, so we'll be also giving away prizes every hour. That's awesome. Um, and Al's going to uh, explain what those prizes are when we get him on. Mm. Um, so uh, keep watching and you could win prizes and we'll figure out how to give those away. Mm. Uh, so far we've come up with guess the number. <laughs> guess the number. <laughs> guess the number that's in our head. Yeah. Um, actually we should have played guess the number that's on the piece of paper so you don't think I'm cheating. Yeah. <laughs> I'll write it down and wait and then I'll show it. <laughs> so I'm not playing favorites. Mm. Um, but may maybe we can also talk to the developers and give them away um, while the developers are on and they, they can think of a, a good question. Yeah. And it'll be like the first well, person trivia to trivia too, a trivia yeah. question. So if someone, if, if uh, we might throw some trivia out there and the first person in the chat to get, to type it in and get it registered on our screen, because I know sometimes the chat yes. can be a little off. Yeah. It'll be. But It'll what be it, on our, our, screen. our screen, which yeah. should show up on the stream. Should be the same. It should I, be the same. I, I, I think, think it is. is. Yeah, because it's our version of the chat. So, that's going so that there. that will be the final. Oh, thing. Al already guessed the first number. It's pi to the fortieth uh, decimal point. Excellent. <laughs> Al gets the first prize. Yeah, but, but he's to, giving them away. Al, so he has, not, he has to add one back in the pool now. <laughs> wasting time there i'll i'll just <laughs> type the whole thing too which is wonderful whole numbers al whole yeah. numbers <laughs> yeah. okay so uh i'm gonna get al going uh let's get him uh, up here I'm just gonna make sure he's ready to get on there and then after al uh we're gonna have uh dion olstorm uh Ooh. also known as dionoid talk about tower of rubble nice and then thomas yench talking about uh, Robot, Robot City. City. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, he has not responded yet. Thank you for following. Uh, I can't read that. What's that say? <laughs> oh, there it is in the lower left. That's yeah. easier. Oser Vera Atla. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Al. Oh, using Zoom. <laughs> well, uh, using what we used last time, uh, Google Hangouts. Um, I could use Zoom. That would be actually easier because then I don't need to use... Oh, actually, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Okay, yeah, if you could go back to Google Hangouts because that's kind of set up for us because Zoom, we'd have to... I'd either have to send you the code or we'd have to Zoom just, exchange contacts yeah. or... I find Zoom annoying. Mm. It's not my... F I like Meet. I like Google Meet. Google just, Meet? Yeah, I just find it easier. I don't know. In the meantime, oh, there, so there he is. So okay, now we've done thorough testing, mm -hmm. so there shouldn't be any buzzing, shouldn't be any delays, <laughs> as long as the cat theory, doesn't shoot on it. Last that, five and that minutes. is actually a risk. <laughs> <laughs> it is. There are a lot cat of cords chew. in this room, and the cat and Atari loves chewing. I think he chewed cords. on a cable overnight, but it's still working. That's a, that's a good sign. Um, so let's get Al up on the screen. Um, you won't, we won't be able to hear Al yet until I get him up and then we'll bring him in here. So let's go to that view. Calling Al, calling Al, <laughs> calling Al, calling Al. 
once I stare at myself backwards. I know it's funny. It's in the it's, screen. It's like it's, my hair's it's a mirror image. parted on the wrong side. That's, <laughs> did I wake up badly today? Oh, here he comes. Oh, he's got a shiny. Oh, there's Al. Excellent. Nice. Okay, so let's switch over to Al, and we should be able to hear him. If I guess Agent Heat was, I was a kid. Jazz, what's going on? And uh, Bo oh, is here. Go. Do we get a shout out One for Bo? One second. Another, I'm going to switch back. Streamer. So we don't hear whatever is going on in the background. Because <laughs> there's some sort of audio playing. Oh, it's Twitch playing some random person. <laughs> Thanks, Twitch. That's great. You might want to close the other... No, it's all good. Is it all I good? Need, I need uh, Twitch. Okay. Okay. Now we should Let's have Al unencumbered by another Twitch chatter. Hooray, I can hear Welcome, I can hear Al! <laughs> hey, That's how you doing? Sign. Good afternoon. Good. How are you? Good. And uh, it should sound good, and we can hear good. you well. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Excellent, because we're using you yet again as a guinea pig <laughs> <laughs> for for the inaugural uh, kickoff of the show. Um, so you've got a bunch of games going in the background. Excellent. And a bunch of yeah. boxes. Oh. Actually... With Zoom, I could see more of them. There are more. Oh. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, is that Robotron? That flashy border looks Maybe. like Robotron. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so uh, you were talking with me that uh, Atari age has taken over your house. And, and all the boxes. You're now living more, more in a, boxes, a house made of boxes than an actual house made of walls. Oh. Uh, well, well, there are several rooms upstairs. Basically, the upstairs has kind of been taken over by Atari Age. So I've got this yeah. room that I work in, uh, which I build the games in. There's all sorts of shelving in here with the systems that you can see. Uh, there's These are all the new Jaguar games, uh, and nice. these are all going to get shipped out tomorrow. And nice. We just finished building Happy those Jaguar last night. Uh, people. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the Jaguar games went up for pre-ordering first which is why they're going to get shipped first. And then next week I'll be just furiously building and finishing all the 2600 games. Everything else is already done at this point. 5200, 700, Atari 8 bit, and some of the 2600 games. But it's just very time consuming, obviously, to build. Yeah. You know, it's over a thousand games total. So, Oh my God. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, how many did you had to put together 20 ish games? Uh, yeah, just count. for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Just multiply yeah. that by fifty. Oh, I, I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> and that's that's what uh, that's what Al is up against right now. Yeah. So this is Atari Age Day, um, which we've never done before. But maybe explain why we did it this year, um, because it's a special special year where <laughs> everybody's in their own houses and we uh, can't really get together. So. All right, so I, mean, I have a bit of a lag. I can hear your audio echoed in the oh. background while you're still talking, which is weird. But, oh, you should uh, mute Twitch so that you don't hear us through Twitch. Oh, let me so let me turn the volume down on this. Hang on. Yeah, I'm not used that's to probably Google what you're responding as to. Much. Hang on, there's no do 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 do. Well, I wonder why there is. I don't a see any volume there. setting for Google. Oh, we lost your audio. That's all right. Anyway, so you want me to explain why we're doing the Atari H Day this year? <laughs> yeah, instead of uh, all getting together at a uh, central location, perhaps in Portland. Well, uh, obviously, you know, a lot of people know that I attend uh, the Portland Retro Gaming Expo uh, in the fall of every year. And that didn't happen last year for obvious reasons. It's not going to happen this year because it just takes so much time for the organizers to prepare for the show, plus vendors have to prepare and 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 uh you know get everything ready and even and and the people who attend the show want to be able to buy tickets and people coming in out of town need to get plane plane flights and uh lodging and stuff like that and just it was early in the year it was really unclear how everything would shake out with covid and while you know a lot of people are getting vaccinated which is great it's still just questionable going into the summer uh so i don't yeah. fault them at all for holding off for another year uh, and there's going to be a hell of a pent up demand for these shows next year. So it's going to be pretty crazy in 2022. It's so going to be virtual. Big. Every concert, kind of a... every event, every gathering is just going to be exactly. huge in yeah. 2022. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. 
So uh, this year, at least we can have uh, the virtual uh, expo, so to speak, since a lot of times there's a mass release of games at the show. Uh, didn't have that this past fall. So yeah. people can at least experience it online, see you guys unboxing the games, playing them, talking to the developers, which is great. Because not all the developers yeah. can attend the show. Some do exactly. when they can get here. But with so many game new games, you just can't have everyone at the show. Uh, so this is going to yeah. be a great experience for six plus hours uh, going on. <laughs> so in again, some ways, it's, it's possibly even better. Because yeah, we get to speak to almost every single developer. Some of them are unavailable, right. but we speak, we're speak. we speaking to like 80, 90% yeah. of them. Yeah, and even uh, with uh, if PRG, when PRG comes back next year and the other shows, I think we should still do this yearly because only a small percentage <laughs> of people can actually get to these shows. So, yeah. You know, being able to talk to the developers, to open up games, play them and everything, there's no reason we can't keep doing it even when the shows come back. Yeah, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to maybe streamline <laughs> it better next year and be easier because I'll have a framework. This year, was it was like a lot of work to coordinate 20 different developers, find an exact date where most of them are available, but I, yeah. I, we'll, we'll see how fun it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's it's going to be a lot of fun because I love I tell, and talking and to I'm developers. Gonna, I'm really curious to see if your estimate of 6.5 hours holds true. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the problem is I have to tell the developers exactly almost pretty much what time they're going to be on. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, exactly, and yeah. Because these guys live in all over the world. Like we're talking yep. to people everywhere. So I've, I've kind of front loaded the Europeans and then back loaded the North Americans. And then there's even some that are in time zones that don't quite work out. The Australians were not yep. really able to talk too well. Um, so it's, it's very challenging. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I love talking to developers and hearing the backstories yeah, about the games. Like you can you, you read it uh, in the forums, but it's really nice to have that uh, instant interaction uh, with them. And Absolutely. be able to ask questions and dig a little bit deeper. Um, yeah, and also, yeah, somebody, Esther says, you didn't have to set up and tear down at PRG, so that was a little bit of <laughs> <Yes>. a bonus. <laughs> so while I, I, while I miss the shows, I certainly don't miss the enormous amount of preparation, like months in advance that it takes, uh, you know, yeah. to get things ready, to get the games, you, you have a very hard deadline to get all the boxes, manuals, and everything else printed, and that would have been screwed oh, yeah. last year, given what happened with the printing this year and how long it took to get everything done. Uh, so oh, there's definitely yeah. some lessons I learned there. Uh, to not do that again. And, and this year we'll have at least two additional smaller releases of games, hopefully by the end of the spring, and then another one later in the summer, early fall, uh, and possibly something towards Christmas too, but I don't want to make any promises just yet for that. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. there's a there's a lot of games uh, yeah, coming that's out an and, and ready and being ramped up to, to come out. So uh, Absolutely. we have a lot yeah, to so, look forward to. Yeah, so while... I'm busy finishing all these games and getting them out. Work has already begun on the next small release of games, you know, doing the manuals, boxes, labels, getting all that stuff generated so that when everything's ready, I can get it printed. And again, it should go much more smoothly than with this ridiculous number of games that you're going to be reviewing today. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so tell us a little bit about the process of getting <laughs> getting the, the raw materials, I guess, like the 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 digital manuals and the digital boxes and the digital game and getting it to where you can put it in a box and get it out the door. I mean, it was a little bit yeah, unusual this year. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, every one of these games is pretty much its own standalone, standalone project. We've got the developers writing the code, people doing audio and music and artwork, pixel artwork. And then, artists and designers who actually work on the printed materials. And of course the d developers help with that. I help with that. Uh, it's a lot of back and forth once you have the initial draft. Uh, so, yeah. And then especially for the manuals, the manuals, the box are the two more complicated aspects, especially the manuals. Some of them are up to 20 pages, like the, the FitCat manual is 20 pages. And there are wow. several new ones that are 16 pages. It's just a lot of work. Uh, you know, there's mini booklets, mini, mini books yeah. almost. Uh, and I so, guess there's standards to uphold as well. It's like, here is the format for the normal manuals. Here's the format for our box sizes. 
And I guess yeah, there's a bit so of back and forth there. So the sizes are consistent, of course, for everything. Uh, but the actual styles that are used for, you know, we're not, we don't have a, like a standard template. Some people yeah. will use like the, want to use the Atari style template maybe for their 2600 or 5200 games. And most of the 5200 games and 700 games actually do follow that. And same thing with the Jaguar. 2600 though is much more free form and those are all over the place, which is fine by me because I like seeing the variety and I don't want to constrain a designer or artist to a particular style. And of course, yeah. Atari had nothing to do with these games either. So while it's nice to pay homage to them, you know, there's no requirement to do that. So once yeah. all these documents are actually finished and, and they have to be set up in a certain way for the printers, and there's actually separate companies for the boxes, manuals, and labels, which does make it even more complicated. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Those companies, each of those companies pretty much is specialized in doing those things. Uh, and in this case, there are, there are, I think, 30 different manuals, maybe 40 different labels, and not just for new games, but I've been going back and having manuals and labels printed for older games as well that continue to sell so i have to keep printing them myself uh right so the, what happened this time around is once the printers get everything uh they start working on the job uh and they'll send you soft proofs which is just digital versions that you can view on screen and then i have hard proofs i pay for hard proofs which are physical copies that they'll print and then you know like one or two copies each send to you and then you can review it to make sure that everything looks good that there's no issues going from the digital version to the, the printed version that you weren't expecting. And, uh, you know, it's a time consuming process. If there's issues, then you have to go back to the designer who worked on that particular file or the files, uh, have them rework them. And, and people aren't doing this full time, so it can sometimes take a week or two to get the revisions back. Right. So the manuals alone, there were actually seven uh, uh, iterations of the hard proofs before everything was good. Uh, and that took months wow. just for the manuals. Labels were the same thing. I had to go back and forth with the, with the printer any of the labels that had a, a black, like significant amounts of black on, they weren't printing properly. So that was, you know, a pain in the ass for me to, to get that all working. The boxes were probably the smoothest uh, as far as this goes, because I've been working with that box printer for a while, and they've generally been yeah. doing a really good job with those. Even though two of the boxes still had to be reprinted. Uh, Dragon's Cash, which I don't have yet, and uh, a reprint of Wizard of War, there was an error on the back. Uh, so that has to be redone as well. That was their... That was just the second round of prints for that game because it sold really well. Yeah. And then there are posters. Uh, Last Strike had a, uh, a soundtrack CD, right. which we've never done before. Uh, Rebooted uh, has yeah. some extras, which you're going to show. Uh, yeah. uh, Adventure 2 XE, also, you know, some extras. Uh, so, again, it's just juggling all this together and the printing with so many things. Basically, if one item in any of these jobs has a problem, it holds up the whole order. And with 40 items yeah. in some cases, it's just, you're going to have problems. And it's, I will never do that again. There's no way in hell. <laughs> Doing this many at, at once, you mean? Yeah. Or, yeah. But, yeah. Every, but everything yeah. came out great. Everything looks fantastic. And you'll be able to hopefully attest to that once you start going through them. Yeah. So this, this is the largest push of games at once you've ever done? Uh, it's probably the it's either the first or second. There was another round a couple of years yeah. ago where we had a ton of games like this as well. And it's possible that I may have said the same thing, like I'm never doing this again. <laughs> uh, but the printing, at least, the printing wasn't as bad that time around. So it wasn't, it was more of, of, of a, oh my God, I've got to make so many games sort of thing. Then the printing was yeah. a huge pain in the neck and I never want to go through that again. Uh, <laughs> this time it's both, really. Uh, oh boy. Um, so because of the massive amount of work and orders that you uh, have been working on, like not only the new ones, but you've been working on the old ones too, because I see yeah. constantly people posting about the, the orders of games that they're getting in the mail of, of older yeah. ones that have been available for a while. You had to take the Atari age store down. It's, it's yeah. you're a victim of your own success. It's terrible. Yeah. So absolutely. <laughs> so there are, you know, in addition to all these pre-orders, there are orders that continue to come in and, uh, you know, that I have to keep working on. And as a matter of fact, I need to do that next week as well while I'm working on these new orders or the pre-orders. But I did take this store down for like three weeks uh, just so I could focus on getting these games built uh, and shipped. I have most of the stuff built at this point, uh, or at least yeah. like almost everything, everything is soldered at this point for the 2700 games. And a lot of that was done for a while. Uh, all the Jaguar games are done, 700 games, 5200, Atari 8 stuff, and some of the 2600 ones. 
So basically next week I'm going to try to get all the rest of the 2600 ones done. By then I'll have all the Jaguar games pre-order ship, which is about 150 orders right there. And then uh, I'll be just focused on getting those 20, all those other orders out as quickly as I can. And, and once I get all those done, I'm taking a two-week vacation because we didn't <laughs> well take, take a vacation last year at all. And, of course, the last several <laughs> months have just been insane. Yeah. Um, so as of right now, the Atari Age store is back up, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, so everybody can get in their, their orders for the games that we're going to show today and, of course, any other add-ons of, of older games that they want to. Yeah, and I still have the, uh, the new games in the store set as pre-order because those are not going to ship until I get everything else done. And as soon as I do get all those orders out, then they'll go, you know, that pre-order tag will, will get removed. But people did notice when the store came back up, even though I didn't actually say anything to anyone about it. <laughs> yeah, they're waiting. They have uh, so there were a program lot of monitor. Yeah. <laughs> monitoring the store to see it when it comes yeah. back up. Click, 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 click. Yep. Um, uh, so, so we're go-, go ahead. And just one thing I just want to mention, I am working on migrating the store to a completely new e-commerce package. And there's a lot, there'll be a lot of additional functionality. It'll be much better than the store that we currently have. And one of the things when that store launches is we'll also be launching digital purchases of homebrew games for any of the authors who, who want to go along with that. That's great. Well, a lot of people I, have been I've seen a lot of yeah. yeah, a lot of demand for that yeah. because um, absolutely because of a lot of the newer systems that pe- people can buy that they can load just ROMs on them, and some yeah. people don't have older systems uh, to plug in cartridges and stuff like that. So it's another nice option, and then it'll stop all those posts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all over people, the place. And people wanted. Uh, camp game stuff for a while and I you know John and I worked closely together to come up with a scheme as far as the pricing and what to do where people already purchased the game a physical copy of the game and things like right. that and he's already launched that and I'll we'll be doing the same exact thing on Atari just as far as the pricing goes uh, for his games and and it will vary based on the authors and the individual games but we're trying to be fair yeah so the authors have some input on uh, what they want to sell it for and I guess a lot of different factors will come into play, how old the game is, if it's new, or if it's a bigger game or smaller game, or whatever criteria, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so we're going to be doing some giveaways from Atari Age, uh, thanks to Al here. Um, we're going to be doing one per hour. And uh, maybe you can tell them what we've uh, landed on for the giveaways. So what we're going to do is every, every hour... And whenever you are able to do that during that time, is uh, give away a fifty dollars gift certificate in the Atari Age store that can be used on anything in the store. And then the last giveaway, uh, as an enticement for people to stick around, is uh, we're going <laughs> to give away, in addition to the fifty dollars gift certificate, an Atari Age pint glass and an, one of those uh, aluminum uh, Atari Age signs, metal, metallic, Ooh. really, really nice. So, uh, and here's, nice. here's the mug. It's harder to see the mug. On the, I don't have a drink in it, which is kind of sad at the moment. <laughs> it's showing up pretty good. You'll, and I will you'll need a, one in there. You'll need yeah. one in there by the end of the. Uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> by the end of the. If you're gonna stick around, uh, yeah, people yes. are liking them. Oh, yeah. People want the pint glass I have, and we have, the signs. Hold yep. On. We have one. We do have a pint glass yeah. glass as well. So yeah. Tanya's gonna grab ours. Yeah, they're really, really nice. Nice. Yeah, uh, they came out nice. I, I just got another large batch of them, so I will be adding them to the store finally. Oh, that's great. So people can, if they don't win one, they can buy one. Yes, yeah, so I'll have that in the store. Whenever I catch up with all these these orders, it's, that's the highest priority right now by far. Is the pint glasses? And you, can't, you can't see <laughs> right now. I'm actually assembling pint of hunter game. What? No. Oh, yeah. It's just so. out of frame. He's, he's doing it 24 <laughs> hours yeah. a day. He's, he's learned to yeah. uh, put asleep half of his brain while the other half <laughs> is working on Atari cartridge assembly and then switch right. over to the other half. Yeah. Correct. Uh, will and there be a coupon code mistake. for those who don't win? Well, it is a coupon for the Atari Age store, so you can use it. It's not specifically for a game or anything, so That's you can correct. use it for any you can game. Use it for anything in the store. Yeah. So it's it's not specific to anything. Correct. Um, uh, if we miss the giveaway, are they available in the e store? Uh, not the sign. That's very special. So, um, but the pine class, right? Uh, they uh, they will be. They're not yet, uh, but I do need to add them. And which I'll, again, I'm going to do that as soon as I get the the orders all shipped. 
Yes, priorities first. So I'm, I'm going right. to show everybody the pint glass on the ah. on our <laughs> our close up webcam here. <laughs> nice. There we go. There. So there's a really well. It's hard to see without a backing to it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, white. Putting a piece yeah. of dark paper yeah. in there helps really well. Yeah, I don't have any dark paper. How about a dark keyboard? Or dark anything. Cat. Well, that's not. That's pretty good. You dark cat. It. Yeah, we'll wait for a cat. To <laughs> yeah, he's sleeping over there right now. <laughs> there we go. Or yeah, they're really, really nice. What is that console? Was that a Genesis or something? Or. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, what I just showed. It's just a no. keyboard. <laughs> oh, just a keyboard. Just a, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I should have used a console. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, I'm far away from my consoles. Console. Right. Up, we're upstairs right now. Actually, only mo the modern consoles live upstairs, and the classic consoles live downstairs. Yeah. That's exactly right. the opposite for us. <laughs> yeah. And we just got a PS5 finally after months of trying. Oh. Ah. So. Yeah. And I can't. Play I don't know. It. I don't have time to play it. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, time. I mm. wish. Yeah. yeah, all my most of my playing comes on the show. That's when I do all my playing. Yeah. It's, it's kind I of my tell time. That I'm playing anything right now. That's that's right. <laughs> no time to play. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Al, for uh, providing all the games for this and the giveaways, the prizes for Atari Age Day, and obviously for uh, working your fingers to the bone. <laughs> putting out being uh the distributor for all of these amazing games that these uh homebrew developers work on well thank you for doing this atari age day uh, i mean it's fantastic that you're able to get so many developers on board and yeah. you know i'm glad the games arrived on time and safely and yep. that you know you're going to be surprised because you haven't seen them uh yet no. so i'm really looking I, you know, forward I'm gonna... to seeing the artwork up close yeah and i'll be glued you know glued to the computer for the next seven, eight, or nine hours, however long it takes uh, watching all this. <laughs> we'll get through it. Oh, I hope not eight or nine. <laughs> yeah. Might get a little hungry. Be a long day. Yeah, we just ate, so we're pretty good. Yeah. Uh, just had, putting Blood some... sugar's okay for now. <laughs> yeah, we're caffeinating right now with some tea, so <laughs> I think we're we're set to start. Mm. So thanks right. so much, Al, and uh, we're going to talk thank with uh, Deanoid next. So uh, we'll see you soon. Yep, thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. So, uh, thank you so much, Al. Uh, oh, he's still on my screen. Bye, Al. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited. Oh. Yep. Are you ready to start? I'm like, ready to rip stuff open. Like... You ready to start? Mm -hmm. um, so, what should we do? Should we what bring the box up first and then bring the person on? I think so. I think we want to show it off. Yeah, yeah. because and you want we want to, to show it, it off, right? talk about it, open yeah. it up, and then we'll then get... bring the person on. Yeah, first person's DNA, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, on, uh, and then we'll plug the game in, get you going, yep. bring the person on. Bring the person on. That yeah. sounds like a plan to okay. me. Okay. <laughs> so the first game today is 2600 game, uh, made by uh, Dion Olsthorn, Dionoid, Tower of Rubble. It's called, and uh, we have played most of the games that we're going to be uh, showing on the show today mm -hmm. as their iterations have gone through. Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes. The processes and, you know, getting better and better as they, you know, improve the game, work out bugs. But now, finally, they're in their packaging mm -hmm. and we get to see them in the flesh. Um, this game, Tower of Rebel, was nominated for four awards mm. in the Atari Age Homebrew Awards. It's nominated for Best Port, Best Graphics for a Port, Best Music and Sound for a Port, and Best Packaging. Mm. So that's what we're looking at right now is Best Packaging. So if you could bring it out, I'm going to get um, right here. the webcam up. Move it a little bit to the other there way, other way towards me. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. So show that for a bit. A I'm going to get in the chat. Dion prepped here. Now, do you want me to open it, or do you want to open it? Uh, you've already opened it. I, oh, I've already seen it. Down. <laughs> oh, this needs to stay up. It's pulling on me. Look at that. Okay, let's look at the back here. Very nice. I love the um, the contrasting colors. The orange and the blue really stands out. Oh, okay. Here. That's not going to work out so well on this. 
Okay, there we go. Yep. There he is. Oh, he's already in. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Very no, nice. You're gonna go away for a second. <laughs> Dion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got a zero page. Okay, awesome. Wait, wait one second. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring you on and you can show that again. Yeah. I'm um, just gonna unbox your box. I just wanted to make sure we could get in contact with you. Okay, so nice. I'm gonna unbox. Yes. Dion's game. Oh my oh god. My goodness. Tower of Rubble. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's got the um, standard movie poster orange and blue. Yes. The contrasting. Yes, it's the gorgeous. action poster orange and blue. I love um, it. It's got Tower of Rubble on every single side. Yep. There we go. Tower of Rubble. You can spin it around. No matter which way you put it on the shelf, you'll be able to identify it, which is very, very smart. So let's open it up. Glad I set up this webcam like this. This is great for <laughs> unboxing, actually. Yeah. We've got so beautiful yeah. manual. Yeah. Can hold that and we'll there. flip through that in a second. Look at that. And we've got the cartridge right here. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh. And let's get nice and close to that. Yeah. Gorgeous. 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 Very nice. Just beautiful. Oh, there's that end. <laughs> Nothing there. Yeah. Um, so we'll just put that there for a second. And uh, let's try and reassemble these as best we can. Because every time after a show, I have a stack of boxes that are just in disarray. So we'll keep, we'll keep the manual separate. We don't have to put those back in the box. Um, actually, we'll... Beautiful manual here. We can do this. This is nice. There's the manual. Gorgeous. And uh, you get a story uh, telling you how to jump because there's nice, lots of variety of jumps. Oh, two pages of how to jump from platform Excellent. to platform, <laughs> which is necessary. Um, lots of explanation about how to play the game. And. Oh, we're thanked in the back. And my uh, name's spelled right. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Zero page homebrew team. Thank you so much. And uh, everyone else who... And everyone else. But we'll, we'll go through that. <laughs> yes. um, so if you want to plug the cartridge in... Actually, I'll do that. Middle one? I'll do that. Are you sure? Because I have to switch things. All right, can you reach? So we'll get Tanya going so on the game. Hopefully it's all set up for this and I think think it is on the 7800 right now. One second. I think. Or maybe it was on the other one. We'll get slicker as time goes on. <laughs> oh. I think That's I saw sign. something. Flicker of life. Oh. Input. There we go. Excellent. Okay, we're good now, and we're gonna bring in D on Olsthorn to talk with us. Let's go. Go full screen there. Excellent. And switch over. Dion, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Hey guys. Hey. Hey James. Hey Tanya. Let's see that. Hello. Let's see that shirt again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. Zero page represent. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm so incredibly excited for your second game, yeah, Tower I, of Rubble. I am too. Uh, your first game, uh, uh, Amoeba Jump, uh, just took uh, the homebrew world by storm. <laughs> and uh, so the follow-up is, is absolutely amazing as well. Uh, an incredibly fun platformer. Um, and I just want to say that everybody today, these are the first boxes outside of Atari Age. So the developers have not seen their boxes. Right. And I feel a bit sad about that. But um, it, so I, I saw him like really intensely looking yeah, at, this, looking at the at screen. Yeah, I was looking at the box like... and at the manual. And uh, <laughs> by the way, it really it's, it's... looks really good, Al. So. Excellent, oh, excellent yeah. job. Yeah. So it's worth the wait. Al did a, an absolutely amazing job of, of putting right. together and, this. And, and, and by the and way, of course, the, the design. artwork is from, from Dave Dries. 
and he did oh, yeah. an amazing, amazing job on this. Yeah, so we'll have, there's a number of artists that have uh, contributed to all the different releases that we're going to see today. And there's going to be repeats because uh, Dave Exton, uh, Nathan Strum, and uh, Dave Dries. Is it Dries or Dries? Yeah, I did ask him. It's, so in, in the Netherlands, it would be Dave Dries. And I asked yeah. him and he said, well, you pronounce it like Dries or Dries. <laughs> so that's, okay. it's like. Okay. Yeah. Dries like trees. Yeah. Rhymes with trees? Yeah. Okay, excellent. I'll try to remember that. I won't, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. So, um, let's see. So after your, like I said, your wildly successful Amoeba Jump, a 4K game is so much fun. Um, you've returned with Tower of Rubble, a single screen block jump jumping Block dropping survival game adapted from a DOS to to C sixty four, and now to the Atari twenty six hundred. Um, there's such amazingly smooth animation, and the uh, synchronization between the music and the falling blocks. Um, what what was what was your biggest challenge in making this game? Oh, do we want to see it on the screen? Yeah, now? you probably okay. do. <laughs> Yeah, so the, I, I think the, the biggest challenge is um, I, I wanted to make this game as, as close to the original as possible. So like you said, this is a, it's a game made by, uh, originally made by Flatgut for a CGI gem. I think that's like a, a developer's contest, something like that. Right. And, um, and actually, you were the one that, that pointed me to this game. I think on, on right. Facebook, you, you, you posted something saying... Uh, this is a great game, and and it, it looks like something that could be portable to the uh, to the Atari 2600. Um, yeah, everything looked like oh yeah, you could do that using right. that and yeah. that using that, and it's like yeah, this could work out. Yeah, if you look at the game now, it's it's all lines and uh, and blocks and and uh, yep. big graphics, so doable, very doable. And uh, oh I, yeah, yeah, I, I just finished uh, Amoeba Jump at that time. And I, I was looking for a game where I can could work on, on music and, and more on uh, a, a playfield graphics. And this mm -hmm. was like the ideal game for me, saying, okay, this is this is a game I want to port. Um, yeah. And actually what I did, so the all the animation in here is the original animation from the PC game, the, the DOS game. Right, um, so you did a pixel for pixel right. recreation. Yeah. Of, of the animation. I, How I, many frames of animation are there? It's like 30 frames a second, which is oh, pretty smooth. Yeah. Very smooth, but like individual, differently drawn frames. Right, yeah. Yeah, and actually what yeah. I did is I, I took my iPhone and I, I recorded the original game and then uh, uh, did it like a playback in slow motion and just looked at all the graphics. Uh, and. Was, Perfect, was yeah. that easier than deconstructing the code? <laughs> yeah. I didn't Probably. look at the code, but uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I thought about that, looking at the code and maybe with some hex viewer looking at the graphics, but mm -hmm. this was easier. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a cat. Uh, hi, cat. <laughs> this is Atari. Um, oh, what was I going to say? So you actually, was there a two-player... Um, option in the original games i don't think there was was no, there no and you've you've added that in exactly yeah yeah there, there wasn't a two player in the original and i i think i um I, I posted a lot of versions on the atari h form and uh, people responded to that saying oh a, a two player would be amazing and i was like um i'm not able I, if i can pull that off probably not <laughs> um yeah and and then um i i went from 4k to 8k so i originally i wanted to make like a 4k game the same as amoeba jump um, yeah. but I, I could not fit it in anymore so uh, the, the graphics yeah. at the start of the game like the cool uh, tower of rubble logo i i yeah. had to 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 get it out of the game because it wouldn't fit the 4k and then i made the decision okay i'm, I'm going for 8k doing yeah. bank switching and then uh, I, I had a lot of options, like I added some music, some better graphics, two-player game. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it turned out the way I, I wanted it to be. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the other player is using the, the second player character because everything else is drawn with. Yeah. Uh, what, what is Actually, the, the two with? play, play game field is, mostly. Yeah, it's it's flickering in the two player game. So I, I still use okay. like player one, but I'm, I'm just alternating uh, uh, the, both players. Right. Because the vertical lasers, are they drawn with uh, uh, the uh, right. um, with, uh, missile, right? Um, the vertical are, uh, I, I think, drawn with, with the other player. So you got the two oh, okay. narrowing oh, down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and the, 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 the player is player one, and then I think the rest is all, all play fields, uh, basically. Yeah. Um, so who who contributed to uh, putting this game together? This, like, what was done by you? Did you do the, all the programming, the music, the sound, the graphics, yeah. the so code? The, yeah, the good thing is I, I could work from like an example. I, I, I knew the game I, I wanted to port, which makes yeah. it easier. Then I think pretty soon I, I started with like a, a basic proof of concept. And in, in this case, it was, you know, pretty obvious that it would work. Uh, I, I think I probably spent a lot of time on the music also. I wanted to yeah. make it like sound like the original, and it's it's really pretty close. Oh yeah, yeah. The music is really good. It's really good. It's and it's uh, it's one of those loops that you don't really get sick of. It's st it's still fine after playing it right. for half an hour. Yeah, <laughs> and it is it's a fairly short loop, but uh, it's a short loop. When you right. pick, yeah, when you pick music for video games, it's a very delicate balance between being annoying and uh, just being there and, and not getting in your face and, and being really awesome. And this, right. this music is really good. And especially because it's on beat, it's part of the game. And it, it actually enhances the game and tells you when the blocks are falling. Right, yeah. And, and the other thing I spent a lot of time was is, is the rules of the game. So I didn't uh, ju just go and, and start developing. This time I, I really, uh, written down all the, the rules of the game like if you're hanging on a block and you push right what happens and if you're yes. uh, looking that way and then what happens if you turn the joystick to the right should it, what should it do um, yes I, I, I took yeah, quite some time there's a game. lot of different ways to jump and a lot of different ways to like hang and right. uh, it's that's why there's probably a, a big two pages dedicated to just the movements in the manual yeah and, and there's and the opening screen, your title screen, is not just a title screen. You can move around and practice without kid. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> without fear of uh, dying. So you can um, practice all the different moves right. on the yeah. title screen. Yeah, and that's it, that's basically also in the original game. So, I, which I yeah. thought was an excellent idea. Like you start the game and you. You can practice right away on the title screen. Yeah, yeah, that There's, works out pretty good. Not too many trainers in uh, 2600 games, but right, this right. one has a, a training mode, which is and, good. And there, there's one jump you really need to practice, which is the jump from, if you want to go from an island to another island, that, that's yeah. not an easy jump because you have to like walk backwards to the, the, yep. the ledge and then turn around. It's, it's pretty hard. Once yeah. you know it, it's, it's, like, it's fine. It's like a hanging, hanging double gap jump. Right. It's it's, yeah. it's definitely the hardest move in the game, and it do, and it's not instant too. You have to kind of plan for it. So if something's right. coming for you. You don't really have a lot of time to execute that move. Exactly. And the third thing but that, that took it's me a essential. lot of time. Oh. But it's essential to be... win the game because you have it to has. go to yeah. the yeah. island. Yes, you, you you need to practice that move really. Uh, yeah. You can practice it, by the way, on the on the title screen. And the thing I was about to say is that I took a lot of time with the manual. Um, mm. <laughs> the the thing is, I, I uh, asked Dave Dries to do the, uh, the design if we want to do the design for this game, and he was like, "Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm really happy to do that." Uh, but I, I I I asked him after he I think he finished both uh, the the uh, the manual for and the artwork for. Um, uh, Wizard of War and right. uh, Galagon. I was, I think he worked on both, doing design on both. And he was yeah. really like saying, okay, I, I really like to do the design, 
but doing all the manuals and all the work on that is a lot of time. So you have to do that yourself. And I was like, okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, so, you, so you did the manual design then. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, there is. Oh, um, uh, in the chat, Kaboomer AA asks, and this is probably a, a, a big question for everyone and probably uh, very defeat defeating and daunting for any programmer for Atari for uh, twenty six hundred games or any any games. How many how many hours of programming <laughs> went into this game? It's probably more than you want to count. But. Yeah, I, I didn't didn't keep track of the hours, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I would think this is including the manual or maybe only the game. Only maybe just the game because they said the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be like if it was a full-time job, like uh, working 40 hours a week. This, this is probably like, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe two months work. Wow. <laughs> Between the one yeah. and two month work. So a, a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is a lot of work. And, and sometimes you spend like like four hours on an evening to do some programming. Some days they should don't do anything, but it's it, it counts up. So it's uh, that's right. And, yeah. and would you need do you need that time, that extra time between the programming days to think about the game and to come up with, oh, how am I going to implement that? Because if like you said, if it was two months straight. You right. wouldn't have the thinking time. Yeah. And like developing this over a year or two years um, and the consultation with other programmers, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So you, you, you would need, you need that time off to think, right? It's not just straight programming. Right. Now, and in this case, I really need to think also about the rules of the games. Even when I thought I had all the rooms, I played the original game and then I was like, oh, I forgot something. You could be hit <laughs> when you're like hanging on a block and another block falls on you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Squishes your fingers, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Makes you fall into the lava. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, in later iterations of this game, you changed the colors yes. um, yeah. of the lava, right? Uh, very, uh, one of the later iterations. Was was that color in the other versions of the game? Yeah, th this is the color I added later on. Basically, um, uh, th this was um, matching the colors that Dave Trees used in his design. Because um, if you look at the Tower ah. of Rubble that, that Dave created, this right. is well, this is basically what he created with the colors, and it looked that cool that I said, okay. Oh. Of course, I could ask him, can you change the colors back to like red or something? But this looked way more cool. So I decided to change <laughs> the colors of the game instead. Uh, yeah, I bet that's a pretty a pretty rare occurrence that yeah. the game was influenced by the box art for the game because usually the box art is well done well after. Right, right. In this but case, the I, box I art guess... was there and I was able to change this thing. Okay, this looks much better and I like the yellow laser beams even better than the i think original it was like green so i changed them to yellow yeah i guess that's the advantage of um say 2600 games or or even i guess modern digital games that they can be updated fairly easily rather than oh we've gone gold for the yeah the disc the hard hard copy disc and you can't change a thing now anymore yeah. um, but 2600 games can be flashed at the very last second, just before they're ready to go out. They can. That they kind can. of thing. Yeah. But once it, it, the ROM is done, it's done. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's yeah, exactly. also what I kind of like about these games. So, when you say too, to, it's like... when I say to Al, this is the final ROM, <laughs> okay, and then this is it. And, and, and Al is going to say, well, I'm going to use it to burn it now. And then. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, I guess if there is like a bug. He, yeah. Or an update later, you you could theoretically. So here's another ROM for the next batch, right, or right. in the future, uh, use this version. Right. Um, so we've run out of time, um, but uh, is there anything else you'd like to add, or people to thank, or anything you'd like to say about Tower Rebel? Or actually, um, uh, I know you have more up your sleeve in terms of uh, amazing homebrew coming up. Um, 
and I'm incredibly eager to play it on the show, but uh, is there anything you can reveal yet about anything uh, coming up? <laughs> it's a bit early, maybe? I, I am working on a, on a new game, but it's, so far I, I cannot tell you that much about it. Of course, you know okay. some, some things about it, but uh, um, yeah, I, I've been working on a game um, which, which uses the arm also. So, uh, yeah. uh, on, on the, the Portland Retro oh. Gaming Expo, I, I spoke to John Shimpo. Just one yeah. second. People yeah. are saying the audio is stuttering um, okay. right now. Stutter. Not, not on your end. Okay. We can hear you fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the output of you, I guess. Um, that's a good question. Okay. How to fix that? Because this is, what, this is what happened last time. Mm, there was some issues with the audio. That we could hear the person fine, but the export of it, I'm just going to turn you off to us. Yeah. Now you're silent. And I'm going to turn it back on for monitoring you. Um, this is really hard because I can't hear the problem. <laughs> And there isn't a problem getting to us. It's not your end, and it's not getting. It's not the problem coming in. Oh, it's everything. Everything, not just the annoyed. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. What am I going to do there? <laughs> okay, the output of the audio is bad. They're saying. Okay. Maybe it's Twitch itself, or could that be? Yeah, and it just stopped, started all of a sudden. Um, let me just read what they're saying. Just one second. It's good to have you on so that we can... Uh, start in here, too. All audio. <laughs> ZPH is glitchy, but not Deanoid audio. Audio is clipping for both sides. Okay, well, okay. Cat string on the cords? Nah. No, because it's interesting. I don't want to stop the streaming, but I could. I'm going to stop it just for like two seconds. Everybody stay yep. connected. And if it doesn't reconnect after like three seconds, restart your stream. Cat, not right now. Not right now, cat. <laughs> Kitten. He is fluffing it up. Yeah, he could be. <laughs> okay, I'm restarting the stream. It's connecting. So, it's having trouble connecting. <laughs> it could be a Twitch thing, then. Yeah, it could be a Twitch thing. I'm still recording locally. Oh, could not access your channel or the key. Let's try it again. Oh, okay. So we're reconnected now. So hopefully that's better. Let's see if anybody... Okay, if anybody's back on and watching, please let us know if the audio is like... Uh, 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 uh. No, restart. 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 Still chopping. Audio is the same. Still breaking up. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Why? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't really want to stop the recording, but I think I'm going to have to. So hold on tight. Yep. Dion, I'm going to restart the program. Check the stream. <laughs> okay. I am going to check my tablet. Uh, okay. Okay. It's restarted now. Uh, hopefully people can listen in again. Now I'm going to check with my tablet. Check, check, one, two. I do have to say things so I can hear myself. There we go. Okay. So it's good for me. Uh, it was the program. 
Uh, interesting. So we'll okay. everybody just keep monitoring and let me know as soon as possible if it does that again, which I'm sure you will. Um, okay, sorry. Sorry for interrupting you, Dion. Um, so uh, with your new awesome, amazing uh, homebrew game that everybody's going to go nuts over. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was a bit distracted. Yeah, so there, so there's you're... a new game which I'm, I'm working on. Um, yeah. the, the thing is, uh, we're still uh, working with the, the IP owners to see uh, what we can do to make this like an official game. Uh, right. So it's it's going to be, uh, if, if we happen to, to, to uh, release it, it it's going to be like a, a well-known title, basically. Right. Start your speculation now right. <laughs> for what it is. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think people are really going to enjoy it. That's for sure. Thank you for letting me know it's out of sync. I have to do that every time I restart the program. <laughs> so now it should be in sync. Um, excellent. So thanks so much for uh, troubleshooting audio with us. <laughs> and, and for this amazing uh, new game, Tower of Rubble, people are going to enjoy it. Um, I think they can download... What? So much fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Thanks. I think thanks. you can download a demo and try it out yep, from the yep, forums. You can, you can download the and demo. I think that's that's one player only. No, I'm pretty sure it's it's one player only, but it's... I think so. It plays like like the same, but of course you want to have the boxed version and the real card. Of, oh yeah, I, I think a lot of people here like the hardware, like actual cartridges. It, it's just our 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 demographic just likes the feel of a real cartridge. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thanks thanks for hanging out with us, Dion. And yeah, I'm and sure thank you guys for, for covering the game and, and, and playing it and all the support, of oh, course, um, which is amazing. So uh, I, I try to watch the show every time I can, but it's, sometimes it's like a bit too late for the European uh, people. Yeah, and f unfortunately, right now we have to do it at 6 p.m. because I'm doing it with Tanya. Yeah. The show. I work. <laughs> and, and she works, so, so it's at night, but during non-COVID yeah. times, we would do noon shows like this where Europeans can tune in. So hopefully we can get to the back, that, back yeah. to that. We'll get Darcy back or Erlen back yeah. too, and they often can do it during the day, so yeah. that helps, helps So we can more. bring our European viewers oh. back in. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So thanks a lot, and uh, we will talk with you soon, Dion. Okay. Bye, guys. Okay. See bye, bye. Excellent. Awesome. I love that game so much. I love playing that game. Oh, it's so it's much fun. It's such a nice, simple game. And you didn't really go over what the game was. So I know. So we have I know limited we've time. I played it before. But basically, how would you describe it if you were to describe it in a couple of sentences? It's... it's um... S survival? Yeah. Um, it is a platformer. Careful, don't bend that little I know. flap. I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm ter terrible I, about. I put I put uh, them I together. So. <laughs> um, Can I pull that out? Uh, yeah. Turn it off first. Um, survival block jumping. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how. I mean, describe. you're 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 basically it's quite unique. Trying to survive over a period of time, and your score is essentially the time that's passing. It's one per block. So you you, you just block. want to keep going as long as you can without getting. And I think it's falling into the lava or getting zapped by one of the laser beams that yeah. comes vertically and horizontally. I think it's like one a second, or at least yes. it's near one a it second. It goes with the, the beat of the song. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's like, I think it's 120 yeah. beats per second. It's pretty great. Um, so pretty next great. up, uh, we have Thomas Yench um, uh, with Robot City. And after that, we're going to be speaking with uh, Jeff Johnson, who is Omega Matrix on the Atari forums about uh, his game Venture Reloaded. Um, so if you want to hand me, oh while you're putting that away. Yeah, give me a second. Uh, Robot City. It is the winner in the Atari Homebrew Awards of Best Port under 4K. And it was nominated for four other awards. So this one is quite celebrated. Um, you could put it, oh yeah, if they all fit nicely in there. Excellent. Um, this is a deceptively fun game. It deceptively looks, fun? <laughs> yeah, it looks so simple. 
well deceptively easy it's, it's harder than it seems oh, that too yeah yeah and it's good for a long play as well I oh wait 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 oh, wait wait sorry, sorry. <laughs> nobody's seen this <laughs> <laughs> let me close it let me close it here okay <laughs> sorry i was Funny. getting i was getting, getting ahead of yourself excited yeah. yeah uh so let's go to that there we go my apologies <laughs> like i i spent all of ripping all, it like, apart three hours on thursday carefully packaging up boxes so <laughs> i'm in the package packaging mode oh endless platform survival game yes that's a good that's one. a perfect description endless platform survival game yes uh so here is robot city i'll let you show that off with... do you want some more tea yes please okay gorgeous oh a little bit too close actually we'll go in close look at that look at that tank look at this amazing amazing artwork just Gorgeous, gorgeous artwork here. Does it say, I think it's David Exton, right? Doesn't say on the box. Um, but we will get into that. And it says Robot City on every corner, every edge. Very smart way of doing that. Um, action strategy game. See, he's, he's named it exactly what, uh, we don't have to guess what it is. Uh, by Thomas Yench. Engage. Pilot your hypercopter through the urban canyons of Robot City, which is protected by swarms of heavily armored, intelligent robot tanks. Be fast, be smart, and get them before they get you. Um, so let's open it up and take a look at it. I'm going to switch over. Hope you mind. You like cold tea here. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so I can see the chat. Can't wait for my copy to arrive, S. Ramirez says. You need an intern to rebox the games and make, make a nice cup of tea. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, we've got a... You've got a me. I, that tends got to be a, my a role. Tanya. <laughs> I tend which, to be, take on the internship yeah, in general. She uh, gets the, the coffees yeah. and the... There is the cartridge. A uh, Same as the... Uh, Box art. Nice. I go. love that. It's Gorgeous. Beautiful. Lovely. Robot City. Great font. Nice thin font there. Yep. I'll pop that in. Mm -hmm. Get that up and going. And there is the cover. And it is from the perspective of your helicopter, I think. Uh, because it shows the two tanks and it's like a first person view. Am I crazy? <laughs> Having some trouble. It goes it this way, Corey. Uh, no, it does not. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a bit weird. It's backwards. There I don't go. know why they decided on that you don't get to see the cover art oh, uh, for yeah. Atari's. Did you turn on? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's the back cover. So it's like, in, so the cover is like an extended version of the graphics. Oh, let's see if I can go back here and show it. Just gorgeous. And it's got a Atari age symbol in the back there. Just beautiful. Let me get a close up of that Atari age symbol. Nice fold out. So it's like a mini poster almost, right? Mm, very nice. And uh, oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. In the middle of the manual is like, um, it's like your console mm. in your helicopter. Like, take a look at that. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's got a screen. It's got the two joystick ports. Yeah. That's but it's really like pretty. it's inside your uh vehicle it, yes yes oh, yes it's amazing um so let's get uh thomas yench if you could mm -hmm. uh, put it back no i want to keep that out actually you could prop that up sure and uh i'm talking to thomas through oh skype again there we go. skype again there we go and hopefully he is ready to go it is rather pretty, isn't it? <laughs> I'll switch over to him as soon as we're ready. Sorry, I'm messing with you. That's fine. Cool. Hopefully it doesn't get choppy again. <laughs> yeah, with the gameplay and the Skype and yeah. I don't know if it's everything together it was maybe it might tripping be, it up a bit. Because we've had issues like that before. Yeah. Where it gets choppy because we have too many things going at once. Like, he doesn't like it. 
Oh, Thomas not answering. He went to bed. I think he went to bed. <laughs> Too late. Is he still in the chat? Oh, oh, something's coming in. All right. right. Thomas. So let's pop over to him. Welcome. Hi. Can you hear me? I can, yes. and you've got a wonderful background in behind you. It's the, the fold-out <laughs> uh, artwork from the cover of your Robot City, new game, Robot City. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, it's cool, all right? Oh, yeah. So, um, congratulations on this game coming out. And uh, this game has a long, long history. <laughs> yes, yes, I explained it. I think in your show again. Uh, yeah, and your developer spotlight. Ago. Yeah, yeah it, it's 14 years or so. So it's 14. really, what, really long. One of the longest, uh, longest uh, development <laughs> history of probably any 2600 game that got released. I mean, I'm sure there's ones that are longer that have just they still haven't come out, but I think it's one of the longest that I know of. Yeah, my, I mean, it, it was interrupted for for 13 years or something like this, or 10 years, I don't know. So um, it didn't develop all the 14 years, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how does it feel to actually have it out now after all this time, after working on it and thinking about Robot City for so long? This is, this is yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. And um, it's almost a bit frustrating when you have done your game, you would like to have it in your hands next day. So it's... <laughs> that's right. So... Yeah, because there's such a, a long, there's such long delays between each step. It's like, okay, now I've got the game done. Yes. And now you need to go to the next step of designing the manual, writing out, writing out the manual, getting somebody to do the artwork, um, putting that all together, make it look cohesive. And, and then after all that's done, you know, you send it to Al for example, and then he starts working on it. And then yes. you have to wait for it to get shipped. So, uh, like, the time between you finishing it, I mean, there's it's extenuating circumstances, but sometimes it's it could be a year if everything even goes smoothly. Yeah, it was. I think it was almost a year. Uh, I have to look up the, when we finalized the menu. So it was really a long time. <clears throat> yeah. But, but the manual is great, right? Oh, it's it's gorgeous. Go ahead and play the game. Well, it's no, the... I was just looking at the different um, um, difficulty levels. Cause, oh, Because it's yes. on three, which is normal, which we'll play on. Oh, but, yes. Um, three is normal, four hypercopters. Yeah, so you, you have fewer lives, um, uh, faster four, speeds. Four iBots. And then at a certain point, the um, iBots will... Um, revive each other in oh, the yeah, start so, yeah. yeah that's when it four. gets that's when yeah. it gets really hard when they start helping each other out yes because then you really have to so go I'll, after them quickly this I'll, one is not reviving yeah and i would definitely suggest doing yeah this I'm, I'm gonna start at normal <laughs> uh but uh you have it described on the back as robot city an action strategy game yes and uh because we kind of didn't talk about it before but how would you describe this game if you were to describe it to um um people who, who might like to buy it asking me yes yes <laughs> <laughs> i mean action strategy is pretty close i mean yes you have to you, you you cannot just go for it you have to yeah think of your next move you have to um anticipate how the tanks will move so it's it's a lot of strategy but also you need a bit of skill yeah, because it's unlike combat, which is more like an open field shooter, mm. this one, it takes place in a maze. So that, it, like Pac-Man, you can't just move out of the way. You have to plan your route. And just like Pac-Man, there's four ghosts. Uh, oh, you have to press reset? You have to move? No, you have just to start. Oh, what's going on? Joystick not working. Hold on. Okay, press reset, or select, or something. I think the joystick is not working. Game select. Yeah. Try now. We are playing with the 7800, real-time testing of cartridges and <laughs> new games. Try select. 
It starts when you move the joystick. Yeah. Usually. Okay, try it again. That's the... Okay, it responded to the button on the joystick. Uh, let's see. Try it now. Interesting. Everything's still hooked up to Let me port pull. one. Do you want me to plug it back in? Uh, sure. Hmm. You... Hmm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's a... oh. Hmm. Yeah, let's start it again. Go blow on it. I won't blow on it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll help. No. <laughs> uh, Interesting. Let's okay. See. Al, did you oh, test it a in question. a 7800? <laughs> oh! Yeah, that's true. Does it pause with difficulty switches? I can't remember. <laughs> oh, yes. That might be it. Who but knows what the difficulty handed? switches are set to? Let me... It's in here. You have the menu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, do have the menu. I don't. <laughs> it's very... <laughs> it's very handy. Right there. Yeah, it just says it's restart current game. Pause game. Right difficulty. Pause and resume. Oh, okay, yeah. Is there a right difficulty yes. on this? Yes, they're hidden and very annoying to access on the subject. Oh, account. that would make sense. So it's just in pause. Okay, try game. now. While I'm up. Move? Yes, it was just in pause uh, mode. Whew. Whew. So, everybody out there, if your game is frozen <laughs> with Robot City, it is oh, because oh, your difficulty switches are on the wrong setting. Well, there, real time troubleshooting, live troubleshooting. Um, I think so. So, this game has an incredible amount of fun packed into 4K. Um, so what, what is it about small games that you enjoy developing for? Uh, it's a different challenge. I mean, if you do a, a big game, you can put everything into it what you want. You don't have to look that much uh, into how much space you, you, you use on. And um, yeah, a small game is you, you have to make good compromises and it feels a bit like developing in the old days where the you, 4k was the limit or 8, 8k maybe or 2, 2k so um that's uh, that's an extra challenge and i like this extra challenge yeah it's it sometimes like you i don't know if you've heard of the saying that uh, uh constraints um develop creativity or something like that it it it, it forces you to be creative when yes. you have constraints on you and if you have like unlimited budget unlimited time unlimited space in this case uh it would be uh, such a different game and maybe you would get out of control a little bit overblown too many flourishes um mm -hmm. but it but this in this case with its 4k it's just like no, this is what you have. You have to squeeze the fun out of 4K. Yeah, and, and originally it was 1K. It was a 1K game uh, for for mini game competition, and um, you had only one life. And there were, I think, only two maces, hard coded maces. And I had to make a simple kernel because you can only do a simple kernel uh, to have enough space to fit fit everything into 1K. So, and this kernel stayed. I, I liked the result, and so it stayed even in the 4K. Oh, nice. um, and um, because I, I played with what the um, Atari offers me. So you have only two sprites, and they are flickering, but it looks good because it's the shields which are flickering, and um, the helicopter is, uh, too mis is a missile. Yes, very, very creative. Um, and I know you did a lot of dis different designs for the uh, for the helicopter. Yes, yes. In the original, it's something yeah, unidentifiable, and I wanted to do something which can be identified. It's 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 originally in an Odyssey two game, a prototype. Right. Um, the, the tanks look identical, I think, if I remember correctly. But uh, the other things looked, I don't know. Maybe it should be a robot or something like this. I I don't know. And I, I, I like the idea of being a helicopter. It makes no sense. I mean, in helicopter has no problem flying over a city, but I like the helicopter <laughs> idea. 
Oh, that's... They're very, very tall walls. Very yeah, tall. Yeah, very, very tall, <laughs> yes. Um, so, what are the differences between the Odyssey 2 version and this? Or did you bring everything over? No, um, the difference, main difference is uh, this game plays faster. The Odyssey yeah. is really, really slow, especially in the beginning. And uh, it's more kids mode. Um... It always has the four tanks, it's only, and you only have one life. So the 1k version was like this. And um, I think the sounds are replicating, trying to replicate what the Odyssey did. Um, I added later in the 4k version, I added lives, I added uh, the, the timer at the bottom. Um, scoring, it has no score, I think, the original. And um, the revive feature. So it's happening later on. So basically, it's pretty close, but um, it plays a bit better. The other one was a prototype. I think they would have um, oh, okay. speeded it up later on because it was really too slow. If you try it, you will find that it's a bit boring. <laughs> um, I, I can't remember if you mentioned it. Did, did all the mazes? How many mazes did the Odyssey 2 have? Are they the same mazes? No, it's, it has a num fixed number of mazes. I think it's four or so. I don't know. I, I, th okay. I, I didn't play it that much that I remember. Yeah, because uh, uh, Neo Media says, I really like the maze design. You can tell a lot of thought was put into it. There is no thought. <laughs> there is. <laughs> because it's generated. Random. <laughs> Is it generated? I, yes. I swear. I, oh wow. Okay. That's that's interesting. Because so, I thought, oh, I've seen this maze before. I know this one. Yeah, it's it's a seed, a random seed, and from this is generated with. Um, and uh, depending on the difficulty level, there are some parameters, which uh, makes the mazes more varying or more standard. So in in, in right. later on the, the in the higher levels, the, the mazes become very dense randomly or very very open and both are more difficult i found that right. both are difficult when it's very open you have to watch out in every direction and when it's very dense you you can get trapped very easily yeah and when there's long long passageways that's also very difficult because you have to get out of that passageway before the guy can come into it because there's no escape there's no route out Yes, but it's also an, an advantage because because you can get behind him very easily. That's right. So, their their advantage is also your advantage, and their disadvantage is your disadvantage. Yes. So quite. Uh, but there are four of them, <laughs> so yes. that makes it <clears throat> more uh, on their side. That's for yeah. sure. They're not and, as smart this... as you. <laughs> <laughs> that's theory. right they, theory. <laughs> they can't turn around they do have a bit of a disadvantage there True. Um, and uh, every maze is uh, a mirrored maze correct yes that's because the kernel is, uh, had to stay simple and that's right. uh, in the original it wasn't mirrored the, the first one I think is mirrored but the later ones at least one or, or, so, or so is not mirrored but I found mirrored works very well and uh, it saves me space. Yeah, and that's right. Makes this corner very easy because it's yeah, it, it was one more time games. to do things. In the yeah, corner. yeah. I, but I think uh, time yeah. is not very close. The corner is nothing really special, but it it oh. I liked it because it's so elegant and easy. Yes. Yeah. Like I like people are amazed that it's uh, randomly generated, and I am too. Because I swear I thought that oh. This is very familiar maze. Like, look at the passageway on the top of this one. It's all the way through. It's so long. That's yeah, crazy, can, crazy, crazy. You can try if you if you restart the game um, uh, from the title screen, it will change the maze. And if you restart it from within the game, you will restart at the same mazes and play them again. So it's um. Oh, okay. Oh, the same fo same mazes. Same oh, so sequence. It's a, yes. It's a sequence. Oh, wow, well, that's even more clever. That's yep. great. So it's 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 like you know it's like the the pitfall. Uh, yes. Does but... one follow the other, or are they? How how is it? Is is it sequence? Yeah, yep. yeah. It's it, it's one follows the other, 
Um, but uh, the start, the start is always different when you come from the title screen. And oh um, wow! I, I don't know how many there are really, but in theory it's 255 or so, so uh, per level. And if you count the levels, then it's five times 255. Well, how, how did you guarantee that there was no enclosed spaces? Yeah, I'm scared. Your... <laughs> I'm, I, I mean, the maze code was written more than 10 years ago, but I remember I did some pathfinding and checked that every square or what you call it um, can be reached so wow very clever thomas <laughs> but yeah. did we have any doubt really no <laughs> yeah, it's that, that is really really good wow yeah. so going to uh the box and the manual and the release um the the box art is just unbelievable and it's designed by uh david exton yes and Maybe you can talk a little bit about this and, and the uh, the look of it. Ha! Tanya killed herself. <laughs> I know! I, I cornered myself. Oh no! I can't get out now. Oh, I've never done that to myself. Wow. You're protected, but also dead. Yeah. <laughs> In a weird way, yes. You will, funny. You will die when you run out of fuel. <laughs> I think oh, so, yes, yeah. That's right. Unless I, I, I manage to kind of... Yeah, okay. Um, yes, um, um, I came up with the idea that Dave Exton should do this. And um, he had the idea to follow the, yeah, the, the, the design <laughs> of a designer. Um, I, I didn't hear from him before, but I think his fame is John Harris. He does a lot of sci-fi um, designs. Mm -hmm. I looked him up and um, he wanted some something which looks I think it looks very um, lone places uh, so and I think this design is really really cool oh it's gorgeous it's it feels desolate yes futuristic but not in a specific time frame of futuristic just it feels just like so vast and alone and uh, it reflects the game very well and and it's amazing what like when you bought games back in the 70s and 80s and you got the cover art and then you looked at the game and you could imagine the game as the cover art and this cover art really adds a new dimension to the game where you can really mm -hmm. think of yourself in this world now yes yes so it's um it's yeah, I mean, it, it enhances the game. You 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 you, you get an idea uh, where it, what the place is, where it happens. I mean, it works without, but um, um, I like this art very much, and I also like my my labels and my covers to be um, yeah different from the old style because the old style was very restrictive. I know many people like it because it looks better in their shelves if, if all the cards and right. boxes look the same. Yeah. But I like I like it. It's um, it's very different, and it's yeah, it's I, I like it is. It's very clean. There's no borders. It seems limitless. The edges of the box, right? Yes, and I and, wanted uh, I wanted to be, to be there as minim as little fonts and and writing as possible. So the, the oh yeah, there's just Robot City on it. That's yeah. it on the front. Wow. Yes, and the em embossed Atari Age logo um, was my idea to yeah. to get rid of this logo. <laughs> ah, clever! So you can still have the logo, but yeah. it's not actually there. It's kind of there. So you're working it into the artwork. It's it's really nice. And who came up with the uh, the middle opening uh, where it's that's, is, does this represent your control panel inside the helicopter? Is that what this kind of is? I think Dave wanted to show a television something view uh, and an overview of the city. Or, or um, But you have to ask him. It's, yeah. It was his idea. It's more than yeah. that. It's You can see it's not uh, straight. It's like when you look at an old TV. Yes. So it's, yes, yes. it could be a control and, and an analog monitor or something like this. Yeah, but I mean, and it's it's almost like the the fisheye lens of two thousand and one. Something like uh, this, yeah. 
Yeah, it's very smart design. It even incorporates the joystick ports in it mm -hmm. as well on either side. But that's very, very clever. Solely his idea. I, I didn't play a role here because uh, he's a, he's the art designer and he knows best. Ah, okay. And and uh, Al says Dave Axton always cleverly embeds the Atari Age logo on the back of every manual he does. <laughs> so this is a, a a great way to incorporate it, as in, like it's it's. Part of the landscape he's yeah. put, on, put it as. Yeah. I like this. Um, I, I had a similar idea for Star Castle because and this is also yeah. great design where we put the Atari H logo on the fighter in the fr in, in the front. So um, mm. so this is yeah. this is really cool. So Atari yeah. H is part of the of the scenery. It's just it's just gorgeous and. Um, and uh, it says in the manual, it says, uh, you, you thank us, which is very, very nice of you. Um, of course. Uh, James Earl Bryan and Zero Page Homebrew for bringing this game back to my attention. So yes. maybe talk just briefly about how you got working again on it, because there was a big break. Yes, I, I, I remember you were looking for, for old um, games to, to present on your show, because you're going yeah. through the back catalog. And I remember there was something uh, like Robot City and other stuff. And I yeah. thought, okay, I give it to him and maybe he likes it and he can sh show it in the show or not. Well, I, we will find out. And yeah. in the show, you liked it really a lot. I think oh you played God. it with Erlen. I'm not sure. I, I think, think I think so. Yes. Yeah. It was an and earlier you, one. Yeah. Yes. And you both liked it. And I thought, hmm. It's a cool one, and I almost forgot. And maybe I should finish it if people really like it that much. And yeah. um, the concept is cool. I, I mean, it's a very unique concept, as far as I know. And oh, uh, yeah. so, and it's simple, and it was mostly done, as I thought. Yeah, it's uh, very similar to the one we played. Like, very little has changed. Yeah, but Just there was a lot of polishing. I went a lot of polishing into it. I think it it's it's a, it's this eighty twenty rule. I mean, the the eighty percent are done very fast, and the last twenty percent taking time. Um, that's usual. And, it is, uh, yeah. <laughs> and and this is the maze where where Tanya got cornered last time. <laughs> yep, she she managed to kill one in the same spot, but didn't corner herself this time. Right. Yeah. So I think she might hey, be able to do it. This it's time. a tight maze. Oh, you're gonna they... have to kill that guy. She's I know. stuck. That's not as as hard as it seems because no. when they hit hit that. You'll circle... get him when he turns right now. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah, that's oh, not you're... not actually difficult to do. Somebody did ask. I think you did answer this already. If the maze is random, so could somebody get a blocked or isolated area? No. Nope. And you said no. You you remedied that. Yes, yes. It would be unfair, right? You you played like 20 levels and uh, suddenly there comes a city where you cannot reach a tank or something. Uh, that's that's right. Either you're trapped or they're trapped and a bullet yes. can't go through the walls. Because the bullets can't go through the walls, but they can go through the tanks. Yes. yes. Oh, you went right into that I one. I know, I know. I always think I can outrun the bullets and I can't. Carl G asks, uh, this is a good question. Now that there's um, a Quadtari, how feasible would it be to make a four-player version with three tanks controlled by other players? Might be possible, yes. But I yeah, think then there's would... a lot of room in the kernel. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the kernel doesn't take uh, for, for the controls. You don't need the kernel. I mean, I can con only control only for them paddles, in... I guess. Yeah, but it's, yes, for paddles. But it's not. A, this is not a pedal game. I mean, you need you need joysticks. Yeah. Um, it could be done, but I think if there are three intelligent tanks hunting you, it You're would dead. become <laughs> quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> it would. I have seen uh, games where they can control which direction to turn. Yes, this but one. Not, but they yeah. still can't turn around. Yes. You like can, if it, you, you can't control the... You, you know, remember, you can control the tanks, right? With the second joystick. Oh, well, there, there's the answer. There you go. It already is built into the game. <laughs> yes, but only all together. When they are at, at, at a corner, and then yeah. you can say, go go straight, go, go left, go, go right. Right. And they, they don't all get to a corner at once, so you kind of can control yes. almost them individually, kind of. Yes. So there, there's the answer. Uh, but it's not three people, but 
it's one person controlling the enemies. Right. Oh, you got one of them to kill the other. <laughs> yes, you can get them to kill each other if they're all in the same yeah. uh, same line. They, however, they just blindly shoot. They're like, ah, kill, kill, kill. However, on the hard level, they revive each other. So yeah. instead of bouncing, turning around when they hit each other, when they revive each other, it makes it quite a bit harder. Yes. Oh, a question on the AI. Yes. How do they decide which direction to turn? Do they each have their own mindsets like in uh, Pac-Man? One mm. plays differently than the other? No, they all have the same AI, but there's some randomness in it. Um, they, When they come to a turn, they, they check which is the closest way to you. That's one thing. Yeah. And then there's some randomness which changes this. So... Um, and also, when you are behind them, they they try to call, to t turn, so um, that they oh, okay. cannot be hit from behind easily. So right, so they do try and get away. They take yes. the first turn. At least okay. wow. um, turn so that you cannot hit them because the shield is protecting them. So. Hmm. Mm. Oh. No, that was so luck, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it is. <laughs> uh, thanks so much uh, um, for coming should, on the show. I should mention that this game is in the um, how it is high score club end of May, I think. Uh, oh, oh, excellent! We we'll, we will. Ooh, that's when we're going off the air. Maybe we can sneak it in. We can depending. still sneak a score in. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a special show or something. End that's of, very exciting. End of May, so you have one month. <laughs> And One it's month not to started practice like, up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll yeah. I'll check that out because I would definitely like to participate in that. I'm not uh, sure. Do you which, know what level they're using? I'm not sure which level it will be. It's, uh, I suggest it's three or four, depending on how skilled the players are. Right. Will participate. Yeah. Four. Four will keep the scores down. <laughs> yes. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um. So anything you'd like to you. add before we let you go? Um, no. I'm no, I'm really happy with the game, and um, I hope people enjoy playing it. Um, the ROM is out. I have uh, recently uh, added a page to my blog where I put all the yes. ROMs of my it's games. Great to have that collection all together. Yes. Um, the ROM is almost identical to the one on the card, except that usually the save key functionality is removed. So you okay. have basically the same gameplay, but but no save key. You have to write it down. <laughs> That's right. Or take uh, Polaroid photos of your television. Something like <laughs> this, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. And I, this is genuinely a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, release and uh, such a fun game. When I first played it, obviously I was raving about it and begging you to finish the game. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I, I loved it you. so much. People should thank you too, oh. right? It's uh... No, no. They should thank you, me this much and thank you this much. <laughs> yeah, you you did all the work. I just played it. That's yeah, it. <laughs> but, but you uh, did the motivation work, which is really important. That's right. I'm the cheerleader. <laughs> rah, 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 go everyone. Yeah, it's it's and so much fun. It's very simple, simple game to understand, uh, but hard to master. That, that's um, the that's best combination. That's something I want to mention. Um, I'm I'm working for Stella for some years now, and. Yes. Um, the problem I'm facing with Stella is that the feedback compared to the games is really low. Um, mm. And all the games are developed using Stella. And many yes. people play testing it using Stella because there's no, there's no card, only ROM. And what I find is that people are really happy and cheering at games, but you hardly <laughs> see any recognition or any feedback for, for Stella. And it's so important in the scene. So it's uh, if it wouldn't be there, many or most of the games wouldn't be there. So oh yeah, hundred percent. And I do all my pre-show testing on Stella as well. We held a twelve-hour marathon celebrating Stella uh, a year or so back. Um, Stella is an incredible accomplishment and helps so many developers and has so much built into it to uh, debug games and to just develop on it's it's incredible yeah so so when we put on new releases or new features and so we, we hardly get any feedback 
And this is a bit yeah. uh, frustrating. I mean, um, we don't even know if people are using the new stuff. So, yeah, I, and I do, I do see that like people post screenshots of them playing games on Stella, and it's like version three or four, and I'm like, how do you even have this version? Where are you finding these ancient versions? Like, update your Stella. There's so many mm -hmm. awesome new features in it. Yeah, um, but I, I, I love all the new features, and and they. They bring on all the new hardware support for new hardware, like Quadtari that comes out, and yes. and this the save key. Obviously, the save key's been out for a while, but um, it has a lot of functionality that people don't even realize that you can plug in real controllers into your PC and use those through mm -hmm. Stella as well. Yeah, it's it's really great. Oh, the audio is blipping. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Perfect Not time to. to, to it's yes. perfect time. Oh, actually, I'll get to hear it this time. One second. Uh, hello, for hello, me, it's hello. fine. Also, for me, it's fine. Oh. But I'm hearing you via Skype, right? <laughs> yeah, you'll hear me fine. Yeah, I can hear it skipping. Okay. Well, we'll let you go and uh, restart the stream. And cool. uh, unfortunately, this looks like something we'll be having to do every X minutes. Yeah, we'll see. All right, and we that also bad. need to do uh two giveaways <laughs> okay because we're way behind and i've forgotten all we'll about do that, that. After, after okay after this brief break yes. you bet okay <laughs> thank okay. you thomas bye -bye. talk to you soon bye-bye bye let's go back to this okay we're going to uh obviously reboot the program again yeah uh, because that's what fixed it last time quickly i don't know what else could fix it um, I don't know if it's recording. Audio like is okay either. now. People are saying. So what? Yeah, maybe it was something to do with the connection. I think it might. It's got to be. Did it get better right when we cut off with Thomas? Yeah, the chat needs to clear that up. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So maybe after a while, you're. It's it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. So we'll see when we get the next person on. Yeah what i might be cutting the interviews a little short then if it if after a certain period of time they're having trouble i don't know such a weird problem yeah that's so annoying that's why when we're testing this beforehand we never have an issue it's all fine it's amazingly <laughs> yes. fine yeah and then when we actually do it live it's like ah things are bad yeah okay 56k modem luxury yeah okay so we have two might as well do them both at the same time okay um two things to give away actually we'll do one and then we'll go to omega matrix and we'll get him to uh figure out a way to give away we'll do something. one and, and omega Ma matrix can do, do the yeah. second one. okay so the first one because we have no better idea at the moment of how to give away this first uh uh 50 gift certificate from atari age which you're able to use to spend to buy one of these new games or an old game or uh, use however you like. Mm. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to write down a number. <laughs> we're going to do that? Yes. Uh, and people can suggest other better ways. No, no typing numbers yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not until we say you go. Wanna be banned? You want to be banned? <laughs> you want to be banned. <laughs> banned, you're banned. <laughs> you're banned, you're banned, you're banned. Okay. Better do it off screen, huh? The other thing we could do between is... Between 1 and 100, because so that people can type a, don, a ton of numbers. Uh, we're going to do the closest without going over, or what is just closest? Does that make any sense? Because you only think, get one choice. Right? I think we need some trivia. Well, that requires an answer that's not too hard, but that's not too fine. easy. Let, um, should I look up some, some trivia game. on my phone? Yeah, I'll look up. I'll find the trivia site. Maybe Atari 2600 trivia because we're doing yeah. 2600 now. Okay, let me let me look up some trivia questions. Okay. I think that works better because then we can just see who gets the answer right away. Oh boy, now we have to delay. No, uh, no, no. I just want to do the number first. Why don't we? And then we can do the trivia next because no, no, no. we're going to spend five minutes looking up 2600 no. trivia. We're doing numbers. We're doing numbers, but also look it up. We're doing numbers right now. It'll take too long. Okay, it's between one and a hundred. And whoever's the closest... No, whoever gets it. Gets it. Because everyone's yes, going to keep... Everyone's There's tons of people. Yeah, but then... Whoever gets it. Because if it's closest, then people just guess 50. But then then someone will just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can't... 
I don't know if that's the best idea. <laughs> I really don't. I think you... Well, it's whoever types it first. I mean, nobody's going to type... Oh, do we still have that Nobody old... has a macro set up to type all 100 numbers. If I see somebody guessing more than one, you're in trouble. So you only get one. We'll scroll back. Stop typing numbers. <laughs> I haven't written down yet. When I say go, when I say go, you can type numbers. Okay? Otherwise, you're cheating. <laughs> do we, we don't still have that old trivial, trivial Pursuit game, do we? No. It had a lot of old trivia. Trivial Pursuit is But we had it, but we got game. rid of them, didn't we? We got rid of a lot. Okay. Oh, shoot. I am writing down a number. <laughs> See, you can't even find the thing to look up the trivia. That's going to take way too long. Okay, are you ready? When I say go, not before. You're typing numbers still. Stop See, typing I numbers. Told you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Deanoid. Uh, you banned. <laughs> you typed all 100. No, you only get, you can only type one. See, it's a terrible idea. Okay, are you ready? Terrible idea. Okay, everybody stop typing numbers. You ready? <laughs> no, James. Five, James. four, three, two, oh, one, go. <laughs> nope. Oh, Carl G. got it. It was the third answer. He's too clever. He's too clever. It's 77. Oh, we need the webcam there. There we go. 77. Wonder why I picked that one. So, Carl G. is the first winner. I will write that down on the back. And you get a $50 gift certificate to the Atari Age store. And luckily, I know who you are. So uh, we won't need any extensive um, proof of person. Um, that makes it a lot easier. I can only imagine why you chose that number, crossbow 777. So was it random? It was pseudo-random. I could have picked 26 for 2600. Maybe. Um, but I didn't. I feel robbed. Well, you have many more chances. You have a chance coming up uh, very shortly because we're going to go to Omega Matrix, which we're a little bit behind, but we will catch up. Maybe Al was right that it'll be like seven or eight or nine hours. Uh, okay, so Omega Matrix is coming up next, and then we will be going to Mick Crocker, who is Mick Muse, uh, with Deep Stone Catacomb. So let's get that going and uh, see how... Oh, he's already there. Thank you. Yeah, if you're coming up, you just type in... If you're a developer and you're coming up, just type I'm ready in the appropriate different uh, things. Oh, actually, you have to be handed the game. See, Tanya's messing it all up. She's like running around, so I'm going to get a slight look at the games. Uh, where is it? I'm only seeing the ends, so... Oh, one of them does not have an end. Is that the one? Because I don't see it. Uh, is this it? No, that's not it. There it is. Okay, let's take a look at the box for Venture Reloaded. Beautiful, bright red box. Here we are. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And it um, has the arcade cabinet there and a bunch of the characters from the game. And it's got reloaded in spray paint. Here's the back of the box showing playing actual 2600 screenshots. There we go. What time am I on, please? Oh, I can't see your name, it's in green. Generation 2 games. You are on at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Right now, it is almost 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we're going to have to go fast to get you in at that time. Yeah, really fast. Um, so it might be a little bit late. So there is your... Um, time frame. So let's open up this up. Move the mouse out of there. Oh, you don't like the mouse? 
What's wrong with the mouse? It's a nice mouse. Adventure Reloaded. Oh, what do we have here? Little bonus. These aren't standing up very nicely. There we go. Here is the cartridge. Gorgeous, gorgeous cartridge there. With the cover art on black instead of red. These are not standing up nicely. Is there anything we can put them in? I have a There's little the stand. There we go. And the manual cartridge instructions. It's instructions for the cartridge. Oh, very nice Atari Age logo on the back there. Very Coleco looking. Um, I'll show you just the front one for the instructions. It's a Coleco style label using on an Atari cartridge. Ah, that's why it looks like a Coleco. Because that's very Coleco uh, looking uh, logo on the back. How do you... Oh, that might be good. Oh, it's too narrow? No, it's too narrow. Oh, okay. No. Nope. And uh, as per usual, all the different shots. Very, very cool. So we're going to get... Omega Matrix on the line here. I came up with a good idea. Oh, you did? I will tell you after. Okay, and good. So it's not hints for anyone? Oh, I have to show the poster. I'll show the poster in a second when we've got um, Jeff on the line here. I'll put this back in the box. Mm -hmm. Oh, and plug in the cartridge, please. I'm sure, we loaded it. Okay. Oh, I've got Jeff. Hello, one second. Switch over to you. Well, if you could aim your camera down a little bit, Jeff. Your face. There we go. Your face is going to be cut off. And we have got you on the line. Welcome. Hi, everybody. To Atari Age Day. Welcome to Atari Age Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've got your new game in the flesh. Oh, yeah. Venture Reloaded. Yeah. That was really exciting to see it for the first time. To be honest, it came out beautiful. Uh, oh, it's gorgeous and, and it looks like a authentic coleco game uh cartridge that was released back in the day right down to the the logo on the manual on the back of the manual yes i was like what what is that logo that looks coleco -y. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but it, it, truthfully that's all credit to nathan i i can't begin to tell you how many hours he put scrubbing the old graphics to try and perfect that to get to look zaku the same style as the ColecoVision, uh, yeah, and the artwork. Like uh, it, it kind of, oh yeah, it blew me away when he first sent the uh, the sketch, the concept of, of the cover art, more or less. So he did a yeah. fantastic job, and I I think it looks really sharp. And another thing too, it'll fit with your other uh, RT or Atari Age releases there. For I think it was um, Turbo was one. Uh, their one right. was uh, Ladybug, maybe the collector's edition. I, I can't remember, but they all, yep. You put them side by side, and they, they all look great together. So. Oh, really? So they're all line up. They're all yeah. like very, very similar style of artwork and packaging. Yeah, yeah. That's great. So you can put those together in your collection and, and make, you know, different sections of Atari Age releases. Yeah, you, you got to collect them all though, right? So. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I am I'm getting close. <laughs> and we've got the you oh, also yeah. get this gorgeous, gorgeous poster. Um I'm just gonna switch to a different view here, so I'm a little bit bigger. Uh one second, let's see. Where am I the biggest? There we go. You get this I'm just gonna switch away from you for just one yep. second to make it a bit bigger. Hold on, because this is really great. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful yeah, poster. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's basically the front of the box posterized. Pretty much exactly. Yeah, with a... Uh, oh, it still has a white outline as well. Just amazing. Yeah, so you can hang that up on your wall if you wish to desecrate 
It, with <laughs> pins. Or you can use, use blue tack, I guess. Uh, <laughs> true. Or true. tape on the back of it yeah. very carefully. Yeah, yeah. Truthfully, I was so happy Al did that. Like, uh, they suggested it, and it, it just blew me away that, you know, he put that extra in there. So uh, it was it came out well. Oh, yeah. So um, was was a poster something that you wanted? Because it doesn't come with uh, all Atari Age games, only certain ones. Um, I didn't. I didn't ask for the poster. Basically, when it when it when it came to the game, it was done, and I oh, wow. I kind of got to a point where I realized Al was open to doing a release. Originally, I was not planning on doing a release. I thought oh. I thought people might ask like, "Can I put on a card?" And I say, "Yeah, yeah." But right. all the work afterwards, you know, I I told Nathan like, you know, just just go to town, do do what you want. <laughs> I consider this your baby now. The, the programming, right. that's my side, but give him the creativity to, or the freedom to be creative, right? And, right. So, and, I, and I've been reading uh, uh, Howard Scott Warshaw's book, and he talks a lot about when they were making games uh, for, for the Atari, they would just hand it off to the marketing department, and it was done. So it's, it reminds me a lot of that. It's like, yeah. okay, I made the game you guys name the characters in it and make the artwork and do the promotions. And yeah, that sounds a lot like it, but it turned, turned out just incredible. Yeah. Uh, obviously you were in the hands of professionals yeah. uh, who did this. Um, and, and I, I know I played a lot of this on the Coleco vision, which had a really decent version of it. Um, did you originally play this in the arcade or was it a Coleco influence that you Wanted to upgrade the two. Oh, there it is. Hundred percent Coleco. So I, yeah. I grew up playing this on the ColecoVision. It was actually the first game system we owned was the ColecoVision. Uh, my only regret: this is not my original cartridge. I, I would kill oh. to have that, but it's uh, it's heavily, heavily influenced from the ColecoVision version because that's what I remember. I've never played the arcade. I did my research with uh, YouTube, and kind of the good and the bad of that is you you definitely see how it's played, but a lot of times they have cheats enabled, so you know they're not getting killed or monster hits. <laughs> yeah, and you're like is that really the arcade, or you know what, what what's <laughs> happening here, right? So yeah, because I guess they want to show all the levels and they want to show all the characters, and you know the the combination of them having the ability to record it and put it on the internet does not intersect with them being the best venture player ever, right? So uh, they yeah. have to take liberties to, to play these arcade games. And, and apparently the arcade is quite difficult. Like, you, it, it gets very difficult very quickly, and uh, you, so I can see why they, they do that, just to see all the treasures, Oh, yeah. Right? So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, um... So what prompted you to begin working on the upgraded version for the 2600? Was it just the frustration of seeing how much better it could be on the 2600 and you wanted to play a, a, a solid, solid version? Absolutely. Uh, actually, I, I originally started this after watching the, the Zero Prage Homebrew Awards. I saw like a oh, lot yeah. of good games go and I thought, okay, I want to do something now too. I chose Venture because the the 26 version it it didn't really translate that well. I mean, don't get me wrong, like it was really good for 4K. Um, oh yeah, yeah, for 4K. Yeah. But afterwards, uh, Fred Quimby Batari he he made a version which had the third level, and that was a hack several years ago. And that was that was good, but after yep. you know playing it still, I, I kind of felt like. There's a little bit more, and then especially seeing like what I remember of the the treasure screen when you first see it. Yes. On the Coleco, they they kind of open up sequentially one at a time and things like that. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest upgrades is the treasure screen on this. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's so much more elaborate and fuller, and it, it has everything on it. It it is it was the first thing that I worked on for the game. Originally, it started as a homebrew, to be honest. Um, I wrote the title screen, had it all working in that part of the, part of the kernel, and then I, I changed it to a hack later on. But uh, yeah, the title screen is is pretty cool. I like it. 
Oh yeah, it's just just amazing. Um, so you do a lot of work behind the scenes on on games and helping people out, yes. and you've done a huge string of title screens for classic yeah, yeah. 2600 games, and also you've converted a bunch of 2600 games to trackball as well. Yes, that's true. Um, like, do you have any uh, upcoming games that you are working on or have some in mind? I, I, I know you. It, uh, obviously it's apparent that you love, you know, just putting, you know, adding things on and enhancing games and stuff. Truthfully, it's like I've taken a pause since the beginning of this year, but once I get the, the motivation back, then for sure, a lot of times I, I do uh, hacks more or less or, or small games. And that's yeah. just because you, you have a definite ending in sight and you can sure. you accomplish it. So when I, when I get back into coding, I might do some more menu hacks or some high score hacks. Um, yeah. I have several games. I'm a great person for starting something and not <laughs> so <laughs> hence hence the the little projects you take yeah on. and and they're that's where it gets most satisfying is if you can finish something right so I uh, I think the only public game that people know I, I started working on that I never really played was uh, Circus Atari Age um, ah. that one people ask all the time and it's it's kind of taught me a lesson like you don't really speak about the games because you create <laughs> that expectation um yeah I, I you notice that a lot of homebrewers kind of get their games to a certain point yeah. before they start talking about them or posting binaries and i guess that point is like okay i'm at the tipping point i'm definitely going to continue on with this game or i'm, I'm far enough along that i can see the end the, as a general point now these days, I probably wouldn't discuss something unless it was playable. And, right. you know, it, it just need the, the you get to the point where you can still pivot, but you need you yep. need feedback from people. Uh, that was something that really worked out well with Venture Reload. Like, I was done the game for PRGE, but I did a yeah. lot of changes afterwards based on the feedback I got in the forums. Uh, yeah, and it, it, and that's super helpful too. Yeah. Having that direct feedback and people going, "Oh, why don't you do this and try this?" Or even for bugs. Obviously, it's the it's the best for bugs. Yeah. But even for ideas, because you know you're making these games for yourself, but you're also making them for others to enjoy because you do put them out there. Yeah, and obviously on cartridge for people to buy. So you want them to be enjoyable. It can go off track though if you start taking on everybody's suggestions it, it it's you got to find the correct, correct way to to filter it more or less um yeah i i find some people are very good at getting like a lot of good detail feedback um but other people are like can you add like 40 more levels right and I, it's, <laughs> you're like there, there's no some space there's a there's a scope <laughs> change sometimes right so <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and somebody said, I love the play field scaling in and out. And that's, yeah. uh, that's a big enhancement as well. That, that was, uh, the, you know, truthfully with this hack, the original idea was I'm going to make a hack. I'm going to add the, the a third level and the title screen. Done. Yeah. And then after that, <laughs> uh, you know, feature creep, feature creep. I kind of kept yeah. raising the bar, raising the bar, raising the bar. And it's like, okay, add in animated graphics. Um, the, the the actual scaling came in later, but you, you wouldn't believe like the one thing that it was really hard was filling in the room after you you do it. Uh, I had to. Yeah. So what did they do originally on the twenty six hundred? Did they delete it or did they they just? I think they just left it, it right, it, and you had to memorize. It was open, and you'd be like, "Did I finish that room?" You try <laughs> to go back in it, and it just wouldn't let you in. Um, yeah, that's frustrating. <laughs> so, part of the decisions you make when you're designing a game is like, what what type of scheme are you going to use for the cartridge? And yeah, yeah. I chose the one I did because it seemed like if a person wanted to put it onto uh, a cartridge, you could get boards for it. Uh, I think today we're right. starting to get a few more schemes, but yeah. I had a very like I had an extra 120 uh, bytes of RAM. 
But I didn't have enough RAM to do the whole RAM play field and make that work. So I did all that filling in the, the game in ROM, which was just a pain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, up. So uh, somebody asked in the uh, chat, what made you decide, like you started this as a homebrew, what just made you decide to switch back or go and um, build on top of the original 2600? It, version it was yeah it was really making a better venture uh that's yeah. that was the intent and because yeah. carl g says i personally find it find extensive hacks to be much harder than starting from scratch which i can understand because you have to work within what they've already made and sometimes that's messy maybe or hard to understand at least it it actually is very true with venture reload what what i did it would be way easier to start from scratch um I, I did, of course, for time constraints, but if I had right. continued, I would have done more. So it was like somewhere, <laughs> instead of making a two-year project, I make it a, one year. So, yeah. but it, it, especially uh, when you're when you're hacking at this level, like there are so many changes, yet oh. you still have to keep something that resembles the original game. That you make a lot of weird coding just to fit around existing code. Uh, right so it it is it is harder than writing it from scratch for sure yeah so um that's all my questions anything anything you want to to add to to talk about uh about venture reloaded or the packaging or the release well first i just want to say big thanks to al as well um yeah. He was actually the first person that saw this game besides my wife. And I, I just kind of like, uh, PRG was coming up and I just kind of sent Rom and said, hey, you know, would, would you consider showing this? And and he was like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, sure, this seems good. Um, you, get, you never know because it, it is a hack. I didn't know you would yeah. want to. That would be received you know, really. Yeah. But, um, you know, this this release would not be possible without Atari Age. Um, oh, yeah. Big big thanks for Al and, and the Stella development team as well. Because you, yeah. you don't know when you're when you're doing a game, you write like a few lines of code, and then you try playing it to see if you didn't break something. <laughs> Most of the time you did, so it's like really two <laughs> steps back to go one step forward. So, yeah. uh, other than that, and Stella's a great debugger, and and you can do. You know, tracing and step by step, and yeah, yeah, and it, it's got a lot. Like, it's got more features than you could ever use. Like, I, I don't even know half of them. I just use what, what I, what I really need at the time. But it, it, it is so useful. Um, yeah. You know, thank you to all the people that played it as well, uh, and and especially if you gave feedback like that. That's awesome. As a developer, like that's. The thing that you, you're, it's like you're, you're in the desert desperately wanting some water, right? You just like, you put something out there and you get crickets sometimes, right? And either it's like, uh, that the game was nobody got it or it was just like too difficult. Like, I remember like when I, when I put out Crazy Tunes, I got almost no feedback. And I think what, <laughs> what happened there is it was a two player only. Oh, crazy thing. Tunes is, is yeah. amazing. It's awesome. It, but I, you know, you learn some things from experiences like that. Like I'll, I'll never do a two-player only game again, right? You got to make something that people can just yeah. start playing and it, and it works. So that's why there's so few two-player games. And yeah. I love two-player games because on our show we always have two people, and I'm like, oh yes, Crazy Tunes is an awesome two-player game. It's, it's so unique too. Yeah. yeah. So that that game was a lot of fun as well. I mean, it was yeah. really trying to scope something into 4K. And yeah. and I had a lot of things I wanted to put in there, but I left out because I'm trying to keep it to that size. Yeah. So. Um, so we we have a giveaway. I don't know if you uh, have thought of something, or I don't know what to, I'd want to put you on the spot because Tanya does have uh, a way because we were doing fifty dollar gift certificate giveaways for Atari Age. Yeah. Um, if you can think of any trivia or something sure. that people can guess. Uh, and uh, that you can reveal to them, and I can watch. Well, you'll have to watch the. the do you have the chat up? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Excellent. So, 
what you could do is think of something and the first person to give the right answer gets the prize and I'll write their name down. Yep, uh, so it can't be too hard, it can't be too easy, but... Yeah. What was the first game, Atari 2600 game, released by Daryl Spice Jr.? Oh. Go. That's a, that's a good question. Released on cartridge? Cartridge. Cartridge. Oh. Uh, got Stay Frosty, Draconian, Swoop, Space Rocks. Stay Frosty? Uh, I don't know the exact I, answer. I, I think it I'm is Stay Frosty, but it might be something else, which I see. <laughs> Daryl, if you're there, you'll have to help us out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Atari Age knows the answer. Yeah, Atari Age would know the answer. Okay, if somebody has put the answer in the I, chat, I, I, Atari. Al, I think the answer is there. I'm just not sure. Yeah, by now it is. Yeah. So, Atari Age, if you could type the answer, or if no, if they've seen the answer come up. Well, yeah. There, if you've seen, we got the we got oh, official confirmation. We got official confirmation from Daryl. It was Medieval Mayhem. Oh, the first it was person there. to type that was Captain Classic. He yeah. spelt it wrong, but we'll take it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we know the intent. <laughs> medieval is not an easy word to, uh, to spell. I sp I've spelt it wrong before. So, congratulations, Captain Classic. Good job. And he is a regular, so there won't be much problem uh, verifying him. And, uh, you know, that that's still one of my favorite games. No. Yeah, I, I I love the original on the 2600, and this is just by far surpasses it, and there's no need to play the original anymore. Yeah. Just play <laughs> Medieval Mayhem. And, uh, excellent. So, let's see. That's the 12 o'clock. This is the 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We're already at 2 o'clock, so we're going to have to give away another one very shortly. I have, I have a scheme for Oh, that. and Tanya's got a scheme yeah. for that. Um... And, and also, thank you for putting this on today, uh, James. You know, that's really, oh, no really problem. good. I mean, this. Oh, no problem. I, I don't think people realize how long this has been in the planning. Uh, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> this, this has probably uh, six... been a year that. <laughs> it's, it's been about six or seven months in the works because we had to get the timing right between the developers and also the games when they're ready. Yeah. And to pick a date where everything was coming when it comes all together so yeah it and these releases they don't just happen like it, it there's so many like i i can tell you one thing about al like that that's impressed me is like he can read a manual and pick out some things that you would never never spot like <laughs> he's done this more than yeah. many times so uh well that's good he's got a, well he sees enough manuals i guess yeah. so he he's well trained yeah, he's got a critical Oh, eye. my name's in it. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, so thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on, Jeff. And uh, excellent game. A massive enhancement to Venture. So if you like Venture, you're going to love this version. Yeah. It's got absolutely everything you want in it you're doing you're doing pretty good oh yeah I, I i don't think i've played this game or the original one so i'm <laughs> i'm learning as i go but it's really fun and i love all the themed rooms i love i love yeah. how they all there's the serpent room and the goblin room and yeah it, it feels, oh yeah all the text is there too yeah. that's another yeah enhancement and like the did. scripted text is great uh i i the, yeah, yeah, I don't know what the original looked like on Coleco, nice font. but it's, yeah. it's really, yeah, it's a really fun the, the graphics for the attacks are from the arcade. Uh, the music okay. is from the Coleco version. And man, was that hard to do. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. You have to figure out the original notes, and then when you get to the 2600, it doesn't have any of the notes that you need, and oh my. It's got random tones. Yeah. <laughs> But you did a great uh, did a great job on converting the yeah. music. It's it's it doesn't hurt your ears, uh, which is a very real possibility with twenty six hundred. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, yeah. little fact about Venture Reload is the only Venture port that has the scaling rooms, and it's on the twenty six hundred. So you know wow. we we got it. So that was really yeah. good. Oh, it is, and and you find that with homebrews is that. 
the 2600 homebrews that are coming out right now just destroy everything that comes yeah. before it and some people even like they, they like them better than any other versions like mm. like say uh galagon people oh. prefer that one over the nes version things that have way more capabilities yeah. look and some of the releases that champ games do are just out of this world i mean oh. we got the tools these days but they're still like the polish is unbelievable like yeah really good oh, games sure. the bar keeps going up and it <laughs> It does, yeah. yeah. Hopefully people aren't intimidated. There's lots of great 4K games that people are putting out still yeah. that I love to play on the show. So there's room for everyone. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what we want. These days, uh, I just want to say this, is it's important to realize that Atari has had many different eras and we're just yeah. in a new era of development. And it's important that you know we, we recognize that because you need new people to come into the hobby all the time to keep it alive. If you don't have ways for people to join and have fun and participate, it'll just die. So I see like yeah. the, the new arm games. I see all the new Atari basic, all those things yeah. help us. And at the end of the day, if anything will allow somebody to, to join and participate, that's a win. Yep. Yep, even something like the Retron 77 yeah. might have opened new doors for people who, you know, don't want to try and find and hook up an old Atari through RF or get it modded. It's like you can still enjoy all the new games on, on binaries and ROMs and play them on a modern TV. So any of these helpful ways for people to get into loving 2600s is is awesome the only thing that you can't do is play on your modded system there because it doesn't work with some games <laughs> yeah color yeah. of the background will miss a pixel now and then <laughs> yeah yeah unfortunately yeah there's always little quirks but that's what the 2600 yeah, is yeah. about these fun little quirks so thank you so much oh, uh, for joining us today. Thank and you. Uh, what do you think of the game? Awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. She's enjoyed. never played this game ever before. No, so it was really fun. Positive really review fun. from Tanya. I love anything where you collect treasure as you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. So, thanks a lot, Jeff. All right. Talk to thanks. you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Some arguments in the chat about uh, who said it first, who said it first, who typed it first. Um, we'll have to go back over. We'll have to make a, a yeah. you know a full uh, a spreadsheet of rules now. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> no. I. I uh... So we do have another. We're we're into the next hour, fifteen minutes. Okay. So okay, we what? have another one to give away right now. Okay, so I'll tell you what I did. Yeah. I opened one of your random bins of games. Oh my god! Cartridges, okay. yeah. and I pulled out three. Oh, so okay. what I will get you to do is describe the cart and the first person to guess oh. what game it is okay. wins the prize. That's cool. So these are classic games. Are they obscure ones or you don't know? I don't know. <laughs> I, I stuck my hand in a bin, so it could take, it could take 10 seconds. It could take five minutes. Um, but what, what, we can start off with what system it was for, and then you can describe... Yes. The label. How about or... you describe the label because you don't oh my know. Gosh. You don't know the games. Maybe oh, I could do the first one. Well, you'll have to confirm with me what okay. console it's for. Oh, I hope it's twenty six hundred. Uh, right now. they're Ataris, but they're not necessarily twenty six hundred. So. Okay, but I, I'll yeah. tell people which console it's for. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. No. No. That that that's going to be the first okay. part. Okay. So and... if you could put it behind this piece sure. of paper. Okay. There's no rush on that. You can put it aside. In there. Don't scrunch it. Nope, scrunch put it aside it. and take your time. I see a fold right there. There's no fold. Stop it. <laughs> There's a round yellow pie shaped character on the label. <laughs> yeah. I think that might narrow it down, Nathan Strom. <laughs> Just a, Atari Age. I have a question for one of these giveaways. Oh, excellent. Um, if you could. Or message you. Yeah. Yeah, just message me on uh, Facebook. That would be a good. Where's the intern when you need it? Where's the oh, intern? I see, them over, I see them over there. Yeah. Oh, one's in a package. What yes. is that about? We'll start with that one. Okay, here, here's the piece of paper. I need a piece of paper. Put it behind this and bring it over. Okay. E.T. E.T. <laughs> uh, well, it might be E.T. 
We'll you see. would know it's whether it's a it's game. got dirt on it. Yes. Uh, it looks like it's been run over by a bulldozer. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, careful. Um, okay. This this is a good one actually. Is it a good one? Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Because this is an Atari game. Okay, we're starting. We're starting. We are starting. Yes. Okay, so people want to know: Do they have to type it correctly? I don't think they have to type. If you're close enough. If we know what you mean. Yes. And it's, and it's fairly yeah. close. I know. Not, I know someone put, on the put MM and I felt like that no. probably isn't, isn't good that's enough. It good needs enough. to be written out. You can have typos. That's fine. Yeah. Um, as long as it, you know, you're kind of in, in the ballpark. So. Was it found in a New Mexico lab? <laughs> yeah. So we'll play 20 questions. Yes. Actually, that's not a bad way. 20 questions. They ask the questions. And I answer them next yeah, time. Yeah, but you're just going to mask the questions. Yeah, that's fine. Careful, careful you're that's not. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. No, no, but you start off with okay. a couple of simple ones, and we'll see if someone gets it right away. Okay. There is... I'll start really easy. There's, really simple, yeah. <laughs> there is a vehicle on the cover. What, it, what, it, cons what console is it for? Oh, uh, it's 2600. 2600. I mean, this could have been for another one because of... Uh, reasons. Okay. <laughs> um, it is a red vehicle. Um, I'm watching closely here. There is. Oh, what can I say about this? That is. No there, one's got it yet. The vehicle's on there, but there's also something kind of covering up the vehicle. Um, oh, this is going to give it away if I say too much more. Yeah, don't, don't. Is it bigger than a bread box? It is a truck on the cover it's not a car it is a truck yeah remember this is the label on the cart yeah i'm describing the graphics the label on the cart yeah um it's <laughs> it's got an unusual cart it's it's not atari released it's got it's a different it's company. a non-square um cartridge uh what else can i say oh it's okay we're getting we're gonna give away some more information it's yeah. got fire oh my god that was a terrible hint. uh fire on the uh there we go there we go Yay, Arm -scar -coder. Arm -scar -coder. it is firefighter yeah i magic i buy a magic let's go to the See that was good. There was a. It, was it's good. not was always fun. easy to to guess them based on what what's on the. On Did the... I accurately describe it? It was hard because everything is like any of these could give it away. So it's like vehicle. Yeah. You could have said like shiny silver label because that that wouldn't necessarily be easy. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. Oh, uh, I have a question for the giveaway. Excellent, Al. Yes, please um, type it out. We'll do that for the the next one. Yeah. Three o'clock. Yeah. Giveaway. After, I, th after three. Very nice. So good. Uh, who said that? Captain Class? Our arm scar coder. Arm scar coder. Yeah, arm scar coder. Let's not give it to the wrong person. You might want to write these things down. I, I am. <laughs> I am. That's and it's two in plastic. Very and nice. it's in plastic. I don't know why it's in plastic. I don't know either, but. Uh, I guess it's rarer than others. But or you it know what? It's, the label looks really nice, you know? So. Oh, yeah. I think I just bought it at a convention and it. It came out. in plastic, yeah. Oops. Firefighter. Arm scar coder. Excellent. Good. Okay, so coming up, uh, we have uh, Mick Muse, Mick Crocker, uh, with uh, Deep Stone Catacomb, and then we'll be talking with Marco Johannes and Dyfed Hitchings with Pitcat. We are going to have to move these along uh, a little faster. Yeah. We're way behind as per predicted because right now we're supposed to be uh, at one fifteen. What time is it? Two twenty-four. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. Okay. But shorter, it's fun shorter talk. chats. It's I think. It's fun talking yeah. to the developers. So we're going to eleven hours <laughs> estimated time. Atari Age Seven. Thirteen hour show. Two day event. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get the person on the line uh, while we open the box. Okay. Time. Okay, so we can do both at the same time and I can put yes. it in. Yeah, fair enough. That sounds I great. I think we'll try that out. Yeah. Um, Get things moving. So 24 hour marathon. That is a Skype. <laughs> so we're going to go over to Skype now. Oh, got a message.
<laughs> it's a convention. All panels must run late. <laughs> That's right. Uh... Okay. Ready. Oh, what did I watch the other day where the mouse was on the screen the whole time? Oh, it was... Um, Just drove me up the Nostalgia Nerd was playing a game. Oh, my God. I don't even know... One second. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Mick. Uh, so we're going to get you on the screen. 